<laughs> well, 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 well. <laughs> what have we here? What have we here? We have us. And why are, is it only us? I will say that from what I've heard from the paparazzi, good evening, everyone, I will say that I have heard that Monique went to a swingers party over the weekend and she <laughs> has COVID-19 now. John, can you believe that? Do you have that? Um, do you have that confirmed? Because, Larry, I'm not a swingers, <laughs> as far as you know. Mm. Very nice. It's, do you have uh, that confirmed? Uh, uh, what authority is it? Where'd you get that from, Chauncey? <laughs> Rillo? Who told you that guy? I, I, I'm, that's news to me. Is that real? Are you, are you embonishing? Everything but the uh, swingers party part. Okay. She does have it apparently. So she's, she is not well. Where the f is puzzle? I believe. Puzzle is where Puzzle always is, but if you if you mean Dennis, I believe he's out at an Italian dinner. That's what he said. This is what the NBA yes. calls load management. People just any uh -huh. given NBA game, people just show up whenever they feel like it. Ah, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George are out tonight. That's fine. No, we'll just go with it. Poor Tyron Lue, right, Bon? As you said before, we went on. Yeah, exactly. I think Arm is hot. He's a very attractive guy. <laughs> There you go. Well, Sarah's here. And, was that uh, Natalie Mays from the Dixie Chicks or uh, Liz Cheney? <laughs> that was Sarah. I have no what idea. What a bloody we, monster. We got them all here right now. <laughs> oh, no. it's... If he gets up, we'll all get up. It'll be anarchy. Oh, my God. Oh, my Poor God. Dennis, he never had a chance. Oh, my God. God. They're coming fast and furious. I know. Keep busting. I've got it all on. Because I, so I am here to help, of course, and um, we have the powerful arm, ha ha, who is uh, looking lovely tonight. Would you like to show people, explain to people who may not be familiar with? Yeah, because these it's two a Streisand on the screen. This is Streisand week, and a lot of people know my generation X used to have parents who were obsessed with the Bee Gees Barbra Streisand collaboration. It was like constantly played. I would fall asleep to it as a scared little kid when I was afraid to sleep by myself in the room in the background and uh, like, you know, guilty, what kind of fool. And uh, I don't know how you found me singing that. I don't remember doing it, but I guess you have something from, was it 15? That doesn't he look like Jesus Christ, Barry Gibb, by the way. If you were to visualize what Jesus Christ looked like, it would be the Gibb brothers, specifically Barry Gibb. Exactly. Autobot, welcome, Jeremy Harold, some crazy Robin. Melvin's with us, our research savant, Frank the Tank, Josh Foster, JMD, City Lou, who, who do you lish is Babe Lewis, Frank the Tank, Aaron Taylor, Camillo Head, Robert Smithers, AJ, Mike White, JMD, Hooper 45, I probably said it already, Coliseum, right? Welcome, everyone. We love you all. The chat is so insane. We would read every comment if we could. I, I read one, Josh Foster, welcome. Jesus is way darker than Barry Gibb. I play. I, I own all the rights to the Bee Gees and Barbara Streisand, so there's no copyright infringement issues. Thank you, uh, Benjamin. You got that. I've owned them since oh the 70s. Oh my god! You are on <laughs> fire. Those are my parents. Tonight. Yes, Frank. Those are my parents. I wish. Brilliant. Now, neither of us listened to the show today, but I've listened to the clips. And it does not sound particularly enjoyable to mine ear from what I heard. He's hyping up this interview. And do, do we want to start with the clips, John? Do you want to, should we start now with the clips or should, uh, we could do whatever we want. Like. <laughs> it's so. Barbara's not on that. That's from the, uh, the uh, Saturday Night Fever soundtrack, Tamara Francois Warner. Um, that was, uh, God damn it. That was a binge I went on to watch all movies set and shot in New York in the late 70s. John, John wow. Depp, let me open up the Depp portal. Same director as Nick of Time, Bon. John Depp. Oh, Batten, let's talk about this for a sec. I haven't, I haven't been on the Deppening for a while, so I haven't been able to tell you this. I did, I did a deep dive the other month and I watched Nick of Time 
and the oh, the other one, that just the the really other one, the really bad one, uh, the ninth Nick of Time and the Ninth Gate. I watched them both in an evening, and holy crap, John, that's two garbage movies. Very sad too, because that's right in 1995 when he did uh, Donnie Brasco, which is arguably his greatest movie ever. 97. Oh, okay. Um, it came out the same day as Private Parts. And uh, these movies, Ninth Gate and Nick of Time, wow, they're so bad. Do you agree so with Judy Tanuna's crit- critique of it that he looks utterly and completely bored in both movies? Uh, in, yeah, in Nick of Time for sure. Yeah, I mean both, yes. I, I agree with the Tanuda. Um Terrible. Uh, Nick of Time looked like a student directed it to me. Some of the scenes <laughs> well, were it was, so... The gimmick was it was set in real time, so it, mm. it, it begats shit like 24 because it was as the clock ticks, it ticks That's well. right. I, 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 the gimmick didn't work. I didn't care at all about the time. I was just watching it going, is this... And it was, it was awful. Yeah. I... I yeah, and he did not look happy. Depp didn't look. Depp didn't even seem. The whole According premise was absolutely. According to the absurd. director, John Batham, he had just opened the Viper Room. Viper Room was open for about a year, and he was pulling all nighters at the Viper Room and showing up at the set, sleepwalking through the scenes. That's why he looks. He looks like he's going to fall asleep, right? Like every any given yeah. moment, his eyes are drooped. Yeah, that's a real thing. There's a, I mean, that's a terrible, terrible movie. And then the Ninth Gate is, is, so, oh my god, it's so bad. How bad it's is it that so... he does that movie and now he's linked with Roman Polanski, and he's oh, an advocate no. for Roman Polanski? That's what you come up with if you're gonna collaborate with Roman, an absolute pedo monster, and that's what you come up with. Is that really worth it? That's how we get introduced to Vanessa too. That's right. I, I don't know why he signed on for these films, and I'm sure he got paid at five, ten million or something. Yeah, he's probably one. getting around five at that time, three to five for that shit. I mean, there's a scene in Night Gate with this woman in a wheelchair yeah. that he's talking to her for like five minutes, yep. and the camera Forgot doesn't even that. switch positions. It's just, I'm who directed this? That's, that's Polanski. A that's a Polanski shot. film. That's was, a Polanski film. Oh. Oh. Uh, that, that scene infuriated me, and the whole movie infuriated me. The ending was oh, the special effects. You can't even call them special effects. They were <laughs> garbage, garbage, I tell you. I love that you I yell was... it like I made the movie, like I'm involved in the production, like I have anything to do with the production. I have to, I have to, I have to explain for these movies. I love how people yell at me. For I know, I know. Like I, know, I would have I chosen it. I am kind of holding you accountable. <laughs> <laughs> Lena Olin, that's his wife. That's Polanski's wife, Autobot. Good call. Oh, she was smoking hot back in the day, uh, that woman. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the chat and let's have a look. We've got a usual suspects. Hold on. Let's see what. Are we getting chat on here? Yes, we are. Dan's done. Benjamin. All right, let's go to the clips. Let's go to right now. This is on Let's go to the clips. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he's. This is a this is a big one actually. I've got a couple of notes on this one. So he's while you're playing this, I'm gonna send you um, the uh, just in case you want it. You don't have to do it. I'm gonna send you the J- uh, James Brolin interview Howard did in '99. In case you feel like going to that. Okay. Because it's completely germane to Streisand. It sounds. But long, you know we can, we can we can carry it over tomorrow if you want. I really don't care. Uh, oh, we'll we'll just just. Yeah, you, you trot on and, and email it, and we'll see how we go. Okay. Um, so this is crazy stuff. Like he's – I sent Monique a message last week. Like I just said, uh, what kind of out-of-touch guy thinks that his audience are going to get excited about Barbara effing Streisand? Like this is just crazy and like – I just can't believe he's interested in. I mean, it's just uh, as you're. Well, he's trying to have post Malone later. on. He's trying to have post Malone on. Then he goes, "Who? Who is this for? Who is your audience? This is a gay man. He is screaming. <laughs> he is screaming to come out of the closet yeah. that wants to have Streisand on this bed." And I have a gaggle of clips of him bashing her 
over time. And we all know, I mean, this is just another hypocrisy waffling thing he circles back to now and he's contradicting himself. You all know it when her name came up. There's almost no name you can't bring up over time that he is not trying to make up with now. But she is a weird one. It's almost like Streisand's like sharing that the more she stays out of the limelight, the more popular she became. This mystique mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. developed of something she doesn't deserve. You know, the less I do, the more you want me. And it's bizarre. She doesn't deserve nearly the gushing she gets. Not saying she can't as, sing. As your clips will illustrate, this is a Hamptons thing. So he Hampton, thinks, he's, always, he, he thinks they're friends. He thinks that she's his friend. And uh, so for those who don't know, yeah, she's got this monster book coming out this week. So uh, he's concerned because she's done what the thing he hates the most and has dictated the terms on what's going to happen with the interview so we'll have a listen to this now okay i um i spent my entire last four days immersed in barbara streisand because i'm gonna get to speak with her on tuesday by the way i should mention especially to you robin we're starting the show tomorrow at 10 a.m., you say, why, why, why? Well, we're... Why, um, why? <laughs> I wouldn't really bend the time of the show for anyone because actually it fucks me up royally. I got a crazy schedule the next couple of days. Starting the show at 10 a.m. fucks me up because, like, I'm good when I wake up. At, by 10 a.m., I'm asleep. That's or right. Not. I'm, the morning's over. Your energy's it, gone. It, yeah, it really is. There's a, there's a small window where I have energy. <laughs> and the window is I wake up. And uh, till about 10 a.m., I'm good, and then I crash. Yeah. But Barbara Streisand, she starts her day every day. So let's, let's just break that. This guy's energy lasts for three, three and a half hours. Is that what he's trying to say to us? We can do a whole show on this one topic. It's been, it's been a bugaboo of mine since I was a kid. Not a kid, but a teenager. And why this show needs to be on in the morning. And I... I I, 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 I push back on all morning radio, morning drive priority that I think it's bullshit. I think that Rush Limbaugh was on at night. I don't listen to Rush Limbaugh. I'm the complete antithesis of him. But his show was huge. Can't deny it. It was on at noon. Couldn't have been bigger. And I think we could spend the whole time with the chat seeing that this show never needed to be on in the morning. And every time they need this, it's almost like the NFL when they show, uh, when they go to the championship game, suddenly it's 3 and 6.30 Eastern time. And yet the rest of the season is 1 and 4. When it's most important, they seem to move it to 3. So it's like this. Why don't you just do this all the time? It's because he wants to start. I don't know if it's the fake work ethic. I don't know if he wants to make it. He wants to start his weekend early. He just wants to get out of there all the time. But that's his circadian rhythm and no one else's. Because there's nothing serves this show. The energy sucks. You could hear every day how little energy he has, how lifeless. Who is it? Uh, Music Stream or someone or, or uh, Zuma Dog. I was confused those two jagoffs in the chat said that he sounds like he's had a stroke in this Mm -hmm. in the current show and at this time now mm -hmm. notice anyone who's ever heard the show move to the afternoon how great the energy when they did the roast at night how great was that energy why would you not want to maintain that over time yep they don't it's uh like, like you don't have to agree with me bond but i have i, I don't I do I, agree with you yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody who, who in a gaggle of <laughs> as you would say would agree with that Wig Katie and Rhythm Mark Everly. That's so great. I'm jealous. Can we say we got co writership of that? That's so great. Wig Katie, Wig Katie and Rhythm. I love it, Mark. <laughs> that does... I mean, I mean, uh, this goes for everyone in the comments. Did you, how this show does not need to be on it? It never did. He writes his own ticket. He always has. It, the You remember the WNBC energy. It, Opie and Anthony were rocking and rolling in the afternoon. There's nothing about this show that lends itself to the AM. It's total bullshit. They should have taped in the back in the day in the K Rock days. They should have taped it. They should have recorded it in the afternoon and then replayed it in the morning. That's what I would have done. Because you, why do you want less energy? Why do you want low energy for that for that stupid time slot? Who says that's where the money is? Don't, don't the, if you build it, they will come right. Speaking of lo low energy, um, Monique just sent me this through from recent. So he does get out a bit, it seems, if you see here. Another night, and he dines with Springsteen, right. and Bradley Cooper and his daughter. 
This must have been the 5 p.m. seating, right? Can't well, come into the office. COVID catching. Who, so this um, is, who took the picture? At, Give him f- Fern Mallets. Fern. The polo bar. So yeah, that's a. Who's that? I wonder. Yes. Isn't this fascinating? Is that Beth Sneeze? It might be. Perhaps? Let's zoom right. Let's, let's, let's sort of creepily zoom right in on her. It's a bit creepy of me, but why not? Look at her. She, she's looking down in a depressed sort of fashion. I, I don't blame the girl. I actually watched the uh, the new Exorcist movie and she looks like one of them. Hmm. I'm but, going with Beth's brother is out of frame and that's his niece. That's her yeah, niece. Yeah, maybe there's another. Is there anything else here? That, oh, over here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you want to? Okay, so Fern, Fern, Fern Malice, Fern Malice is 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 was there, I assume. Bradley Cooper doesn't right? have a daughter. She's he's not married, Diane. Would you like to read this in a voice? Oh, thank you. You want me to read it? You can if you like. I don't know if we. Sh- is it's more important than ever to take time to celebrate the good things, like birthdays with friends. Life is too short. Make a point of being with people you love and always let them know you love them. Last night was very special as we all, like sociopaths, should write this like Howard. Well, food and ambiance. <laughs> and there's always great. Last night was over the top. It was wrapped in tartan atop a cape executed in sugar. And Jeffrey's signature risotto with caramelized figs was the in the room behind us. And Howard dining with Springsteen and Beth Stern and Bradley Cooper across the room with Sarah Jessica Parker <laughs> and Juliana Margulies. Just another Friday night in New York City. What? Weird. Are you playing Again. Hot in the City from Booker? No, you, I know, it's, it's oh, just it dra- like drama play, music. I, I know you, you always you always twig when I That sounds like play. the beginning of Hot in the City by Billy Idol, the Booker theme song. <laughs> <laughs> so that's... Um... So I mean, he's out. I guess is that the the reason for this Twitter, this whole. And he's thing? around kids now, right? I mean, no mask. He's not. He he's all, usually anti kids. This is uh. They, now this is this is a paparazzi shot. This is not supposed to be. They don't know it's taken, right? Did he want yeah. this taken? I doubt it. Do you remember how crazy much. Beth went when they got the, the picture of them with Aniston and John Hamm and Bateman and Kimmel at the Williamsburg restaurant? Yes. Yeah. Because she thought she was going to be cut out of the group. They blew up her spot. The let, she has They have an actual edict from the Aniston Thoreau camp. Not that they're dating anymore, but no talking about us, no bringing us up in any capacity. And she violated that rule. That's, what, that's why she freaked out. That's right. And the the Coxes, I believe, had that as well, wasn't it? Yes. Like it was the whole, the, the whole, the, the gang, the gang basically got together yep. and said, you want to hang out with us? I can't believe they, oh, you know, that friend that you have, who's like a friend, like say, say, you know, in high school when you had, you were friends with, the, with the guy, the cool guy. And he, or he had that really lame friend. Yeah, who was always yeah, gotta, in, he'd always yep. invite that person to the party, and you'd you just go, God, I hate that guy, but I got to be nice to him because he's friends with the coolest guy. Yep. And then one day when you when neither of them are there at, a, at an event, you just go, God, I hate his buddy. And then everyone else in your gang goes, Oh, I hate him too. And you have a big bonding session. That's what it must be like, like like God to get invited. Well, you know the cliche, to... right? About that, it's what Holly. It's high uh, high, high school. Is, Hollywood is high school of money. Yes. What you're saying is completely true, and that cliche comes to fruition all the time. High school with money. I don't know who created that, but it's brilliant. I'm sure somebody in the chat knows, but it truly is. It is no more opinion than, than this, than Howard trying to ingratiate that. We, you know, Gary's a bit like this. Gary's a jock sniffer. And every every football team has a couple guys who are like special teams guys, backup special team guys or backup free safeties who join the team to get the jersey. They have no football ability. They have no passion for the game. They need some identity and they need some... <laughs> yes. connection to popularity so they join the football team to get the jersey it's similar to that but the, uh, I agree and, I, I, and getting back to Barbara so that, that that's that's she's dictated the terms and he's uh, obviously he's freaking out but he continues about, he's going to talk about 
how he's read her book, and this is going to bring up a bit of controversy, sort of Jason Jason Kaplan esque. Uh, I'm of reading things. her book. By the way, if you buy that book, I think tomorrow it's coming out. The book is so incredibly detailed about her life. I find it fascinating, and I have. It's a very big book. It's almost a thousand pages. The audio book is. She reads the book, so you know you're definitely getting your money's worth. And you're, you're kind of blown away by the woman's accomplishments. I mean, it's staggering. So he slips a bit there. The audio book, the, yeah. the hard copy, yeah. the audio. Which one am I reading, listening to? Uh, I think we know. And Which, yeah, I, don't, which get... I don't have a problem with. Just admit that you do it. The world's honest man. Just admit you don't read it. Admit you just listen. And that's fine. Just admit it. He can't even tell the truth. He lies for no reason, and this is one of the reasons. Do you think... If Streisand caught the fact that Will Murray reads the books for him, how offended she'd be, and he'd never get her on again. That's the last person he could have believing that someone's reading the book for him. Yeah, yeah. And w- when you when he gets into the details about this book, it's oh my god! Like, listen. To the this. audio book is forty eight hours long. They sent me a copy. Forty eight. I had to go into the city on Friday, so I spent four hours listening in the car four hours on the way home. So I've put in about 13 hours of listening to the audio book already. And you haven't gotten only, anywhere. <laughs> I'm only up to her marrying Alia Gould. So he, he's, he's barely listened to the book. Right. He's, and he's interviewing her tomorrow, uh, Wednesday. I, I can't uh, emphasize how much free time this guy has. <laughs> yeah, if you yeah. think, you like, oh, how do you guys do this show? You must have, yeah, he has more free time than all four of us, all five of us, combined at any given i don't know anyone who has not i think it was sternwig in the chat no no, not four hours sternwig he has 14 hours to watch transgender transphobic well, no, i mean uh what was it uh transvestite television with uh <laughs> fucking who's what's uh Cher's son's name again that he was obsessed oh, with can't remember oh i forget to but he has 14 hours a day this guy he tivo's marathons of of Chaz Bono shows and and the bachelor is like three hours and he wants it's not four it's 14 hours he has nothing to do there is no fatigue is no energy and if you'd always move the show to the afternoon you'd never deal with this in the first place this this show has no reason to be on in the morning at all it shouldn't be and uh he there's no reason to have an interview with Barbara Streisand. Oh my God, this is this part's fantastic because he's he's got a little. He continues about the book, and then a little person interrupts him. Oh, well, this when I was listening to the book. You know how people say Barbara Streisand? Well, it's Barbara Streisand, sand like the sand on the beach. Okay. Oh, okay. So, thank you, Howard. So anyway, oh. everyone says Streisand, and quite frankly, yeah. I don't. Oh, thanks, honey. Hot water. Thank you, my love. Welcome, my Thank sweet. you, my sweetheart. Oh much. my God, I love you. Oh, well, I hope so, Bill Maher wasn't. Oh. Hope Bill Maher wasn't listening. I said I love you. Is he doing anyway, this to um, troll Bill Maher? Yeah, yeah. He he gets into this, and I'm not aware of what the situation is right now. With Bill, as he had, a, if he's had a thing, he's just starting on Bill. This goes for like 20 seconds. Well, Maher just, made a crack well, about Beth a couple weeks ago, and he's still going. Uh, it's still, it's still in his head. Well, he can't. Yeah, he can't. Well, so, Bill Maher wasn't. Well. Hope Bill Maher wasn't listening. I said I love you. Anyway, um, must be terrible. <laughs> That's so sweet. She brings you hot water. Oh, she's the best. Anyway, uh, oh, sorry, Bill. I didn't mean to say she's the best. Kind do you understand you how many outlets but... and how much, how much access he has in that basement? How much? Why can't they have a stove of some kind or a refrigerator that has hot water <laughs> or a microwave? Why does she have to bring hot water down oh, to him? Yeah. Oh what, yeah, yeah. You could have a kettle, just a a, a fire, a two dollar, three dollar kettle from Walmart. That, that you could set that up is John, next re- to you. Yes, and you could plug it into a power outlet and run an extension cord. We've seen where he's at. You could do that, John. You no, could do that yourself. No, you could have a whole. Can you, have, you could have a whole. <laughs> um, what's her What's her friend? What the the uh, uh, Rachel Ray kitchen down there with every amenity possible known to mankind. You've seen, if you do a sprawling take at that basement, aren't there, like, shit all over the place that makes, isn't there, like, taps? There's a bar, for There's Christ's bar, sake, to the right. John, There's yes. a fully functional bar with, how got, are they, why does he need her to bring him hot water? 
John, the, the effort he puts into this show, he could hold a metal tablespoon over a candle with water in it and warm yep. it up and just keep yes. supping on it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you'd have a mini He's microwave. He's just sitting right? there uh, staring at the ceiling. He could just hold the tablespoon until it gets hot. I, I would love to see that. Unless that's he's what I so imagine. disabled that he can't even heat. You ever hear the joke about someone who can't cook? This person can't heat up hot water, or this person doesn't know how to <laughs> yeah, make the cereal. Water. That's they really him. That, yeah, that's yeah. Well, he doesn't have to. I, I don't no, blame he doesn't. him. I guess like, he I don't want to know how to use a dishwasher if if I'm if I've got five hundred million dollars. I couldn't give a fuck. I wouldn't. I, I, I couldn't be bothered to ask someone for something that simple. It's so much easier just to do it yourself. At that point, even if you, even if you're a king baby bitch ass like him, just it wasn't it just easier to do it yourself. Aren't you saving like a half hour it is rather than ask you because to do didn't something? they didn't they have washing machines in the eighties? Yes, they yeah. did microwaves. He didn't learn anything. Like I can, you know, you, you can use a. Even the modern washing machine, you, you just go, the, that's where you put the stuff and then you put the clothes in and you press the button. Like, if he can't work this out, did he ever use them in that 70s, uh, 80s? Like, I don't know. He, he was a baby boomer that didn't cut his own grass. Do you know how weird that is? It's like, laziness. my generation, Generation X, everybody had chores. Even the most spoiled brats among us had something to do. And the guy didn't even cut a – you know how rare that is? How privileged his childhood was? They didn't have to do chores or cut the lawn? That's what you're dealing with. He, he hasn't been relatable since he was a friggin' teenager. He still is a world's oldest teenager, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, Benjamin. It is like a Smith Haven Mall food court down. There. Yes, it's exactly right. That's what the basement looks like. B the Brendan Byrne Arena. It's that big. He needs the inventor he, of the microwave. He wants it Jetson style. Oh, love the sound garden. Bad motor finger. What an album. <laughs> nice avatar. Lady Boz. I love how you put it. You have to put it in parentheses next to it. Lady Boz. Oh, that's a great reference, Jeremy. The whole remember Grillo and Casey with his stupid bread. He was having lunch at ten o'clock in the morning, and they didn't. He didn't know how to microwave a goddamn potato. How stupid is that? Do you remember that whole song with them in the breakfast? You know how easy that shit is to make hot water. He doesn't know how to heat up hot water for Christ's sake. It's scary. He loves not knowing, as Monique, because and loves said. not knowing. And then he goes into this. He starts. He, it's a boring obsession with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's and the then worst. he decides to take a shot at Kate Bush, who is, oh, like, I love her music so much. I'm such a big fan of Kate Bush, so it's just painful when he hits on something that's so good and he just shits. He's just so ignorant. How is she even I on his not, radar? And I'm not trying to be mean to the lady. I don't even know her music. A Kate Bush they inducted, and I, I don't even it. know that anybody. First of all, I don't know, Kate Bush. She didn't even bother to show up. Yeah, I read I... a quote from her. Did you see what she said? She said the What'd honor is being inducted. <laughs> I don't need to show up. So listen carefully. I'll tell you a few things about Kate Bush. She lives in England. She's English. Okay, so yeah. does she want to fly to America for the stupid Hall of Fame? No. And she's a, a, a huge recluse who also yeah. had intense stage fright and she didn't perform live for like 30 years she put out an album for like 20 years she's very she an event he, if he if he knew anything if he read the first paragraph of the wikipedia he'd understand that so he's it's just the typical thing where he doesn't know shit about it so it's just all uh i don't know I don't isn't that care. more rock and roll like him. isn't it more rock and roll not to go yeah, man. Is it, oh, isn't oh, isn't yeah. that too cool for school? Is the move like don't go? I love it that she's not going. She's she's yeah. an absolute legend, a legend. She like, she, look she really at... is in that like sort of alternative, hundred and twenty minutes ninety genre. She really was like the top of her game. She really worshipped. I'm trying to think of someone who he compare Liz Fair maybe or someone like that. That kind of ilk that had well... that kind of. Kate Bush was more, yeah, I know, you're on the right track, yeah. But, I mean, you ask Lady Gaga who her five influences are, It's gonna, one of them is going to be Kate Bush. You ask Madonna, you ask all these people, they're going to say, oh, my God, I love Kate Bush. But, of course, how doesn't have a clue? And then for some reason, Monique threw this in there, was this 
ghastly Cocktober song. So, John, we don't know because we didn't listen, but this is just a short clip of which of just how bad these guys are as writing stuff. So they're doing the Adam Sandler song, a new version, or, or maybe this is Adam Sandler singing it. It might well, be. Yeah, it's even worse than that. It's even worse than that, Bon. It's an imitation of Jimmy Fallon doing an imitation of Adam Sandler. Oh, my. Yeah, it's almost like a triple oh, retread. I could tell in the first syllable. You're killing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it doesn't get any worse than that. A photocopy of a photocopy of, yep. a, oh, my God. God. Fake, 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 fake. I can't believe it. I just want to die right now. When on Autobot says, would you compare to Fiona Apple? Uh, no, you can't yeah. compare her for Fiona Apple because Fiona Apple came out in like the late nineties, nineteen ninety nine. Kate Bush well, maybe that's first, what's so great about her that she, 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 um, she, you can't compare it to anybody. Maybe well, that's if you ask, if you asked Fiona Apple, uh, it's another good example. Fiona Apple would absolutely love Kate Bush, set like Tori yeah. Amos. Why they all that, yeah. tried to be like, yeah, I mean, that's an incredible song. Yep. You listen to 80, 1985 album or eighty four Hounds of Love. That is like seminal, seminal. I remember seminal. one time I, had, I was in this weird depression and I sat in my car. And I listened to that song 40 times in a row and I drank a whole 12 pack at five in the morning and just passed out. <laughs> Not driving. I was I was home and no, I just didn't but... feel like getting out of the car. It was like I was like 22 yeah. or something. I know you would never get blind drunk and drive. You'd have like maybe three or four beers. But no, no I was like, home. I just eight. was so comfortable yeah. in the car. And I'm like, this song is intoxicating. I, got, and I just kept replaying oh, yeah. it over and over again. You running on this? It was, it was it's such a, like, the oh, arrangement. It was so oh. unique. It's so much in the <laughs> reverb. You're running on. You want to hurt me? Oh, nice. It, I know. It's, 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 I mean, you know, it's crazy. I that love it. I love it. And yeah, no, Placebo, I'm sorry, that was the band Placebo did a cover of it, and it was an awesome <laughs> cover. I mean, nice. uh, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, also, too, like, it's so, it's not supposed to be a competition, right? Isn't it music where all it's art, right? What does it mean to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in something as stupid and as arbitrary as the current state of the music industry? Who the f John Hine and Gary are on the committee. That's how stupid it is. That's why she doesn't want to go. We figured it out. She doesn't want to go because John Hine and Gary are on, and that she's protesting the whole the whole damn thing. I mean, who wouldn't want to go to Cleveland though, right? Reenact the <laughs> Drew Carey opening theme song. Like, yeah, I, this the the the. the this whole topic for how it has to happen every year is incredible. Yeah, for the last so... probably ten years, maybe he's gone through it. Or I don't know. I'll have to look back, but maybe he got all hooked on it when Bon Jovi got him there. Maybe that's yeah. when he started talking about it. But maybe now it's like when you've got no material at all. It does you, seem like that his default now is this. go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You're right. It seems like that's a new default lack of material is to, is to crutch on the most innocuous, stupid ass rock and roll hall of fame induction news. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's not on and anyone's radar. It's because it's Gary and fucking Hein and Zoss Rapin yeah, are all on the it. goddamn committee. That's Zoss. You're on it with Zoss. It's, you know that it's Zoss's people. It's all his gang, but let's just listen to this Cocktober song. Cause this is going to hurt. Like I, I, I listened to a little bit like a, 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 a a copy of a copy. Detox or in showbiz. Yeah, Howard Stern is not hung by thy herd red nor is his. Bon, you remember when, um, yeah. You remember when Dana Carvey first did uh, Bush? I loved it. And, yeah. and everyone was imitating Dana Carvey doing Bush. Yeah. Like you wouldn't, you couldn't do Bush anymore because he had just nailed it so magnificently that nobody could do it without imitating Dana Carvey doing Bush. That's kind of what that is. That's what this totally show like does. I've caught it every time. That's what the people on the show do. Exactly. Let's get to this. I just got to hear this chorus because this is going to hurt. I'm just... I... Pull out your boner. Let's celebrate October. Growers and showers. Let's celebrate October. So are they playing this now in and then November? Seven, right, seven days after October. What, what? And we're playing this now. All right, let's talk. Let's get serious, John, because I'm going to tell you something that's going to mess with your mind. Eddie Murphy knows where Howard grew up. 
I haven't yeah. seen Eddie Murphy in 100 years, but yeah, he's a, a fellow Roosevelt Long Islander. Anybody who's from Roosevelt Long Island, I'll, I'll hang with, and we talk about the old neighborhood. Anytime I saw him, we talked about Roosevelt, Conlon Road, House Boulevard. And every time I would make a reference to that, time, Eddie would start laughing, I think because he was like, damn, you really did live in Roosevelt, didn't you? I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe I survived. Wow. So if Jay Leno was from Roosevelt, he'd hang with Jay. Is can that what I, he's saying? Um, can I tell you, you I caught this lie. This. Here, Roll with um, this, John. Now, Eddie Murphy has only done the Stern Show at WNBC for five minutes. That's the only time in his life he's ever had any interaction with him whatsoever. He's conflating this. He's lying to the audience and he's making it as if the conversations he had with Charlie Murphy, who was on the show several times, is actually Eddie Murphy to try to give himself some cool factor because Charlie Murphy's beneath him. He has to make it look like Eddie Murphy is who's interested in him. They're not from, Howard left Roosevelt. His entire high school experience is in Rockville Center. So none of that even – he's also seven years older than Eddie Murphy. So they're not even bonding on that. They miss each other entirely. He had a chance to have Dr. J on. This town of Roosevelt is known for having is Flav of Flav, Dr. J, Howard, and Eddie mm -hmm. Murphy. That Howard's – you know, didn't stay. So he gets like a half a point. But that's a lot of people at the top of their industry in the same little town in uh, Long Island, Nassau County. The only time Eddie Murphy's ever mentioned Howard was on Inside the Actors Studio. He said he talked about Roosevelt and he referenced those guys. But what he did was he referenced conversations he had with Charlie Murphy and made it and lied to the audience that he was talking to Eddie. Because mm -hmm. I don't know Lord. if you remember Charlie's on the show about ten, uh, eight, no, no, six times, mm -hmm. half dozen times. Yeah, Eddie Murphy got beat Amazing. up by Paul Locks. Did you, but did you believe that he had he did? Did I just hear that wrong? Did he just mention that he's had extensive conversations with Eddie Murphy? Did I? Am That's I? Good. Did I mishear that or what? Did he no, not did just he say like... I? Huh? He's he's, he's telling... yeah. He's a, a fellow Roosevelt Long Islander. Any. And we talk about the old neighborhood. Anytime I saw him, we talked about Roosevelt, Conlon Road, House Boulevard. And every time I would make a reference to that time, Eddie would start laughing, I think, because he was like, damn, you really... No, he's, he's talking in no. past tense. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so he's acting like he and Eddie Murphy had some pre-existing dialogue they've had about Roosevelt. He's never spoken to him other than the for five minutes at WNBC. And the only... It's Charlie Murphy. He, he's yeah, and I didn't miss here. He acted like he's friends with Eddie Murphy. Yeah, he does I say that miss, at the end. Yeah. He says, oh, "Damn, you really did live in Roosevelt, didn't you?" <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe I survived. That's what Eddie said to Howard, apparently. And we're oh. just hearing Eddie this now. would start laughing. I think because he was like, "Damn, you really did live in." Ro I would make a reference to that time. Eddie would start laughing. I think because he was like, "Damn, you really did mm. live in Roosevelt, didn't you?" <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> so he's talked to him once. You're saying. Oh, he, he, the only, I, I used to have this on a hard drive, my old, the computer that broke on me. Um, it was Eddie Murphy had done the Stern show very, very briefly in the early, in the earliest days of WNBC, but he was on for five minutes and he was really morose and dodge and kind of cut out. I, it's as short as you think it is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like he wasn't going to sit there for an hour and a half. Yes. Josh Foster, Dr. J moved to Roosevelt the year Howard moved out. So right around that exact age, Eddie, Dr. Julie Serving went there to play high school basketball and Howard moved out to go to Rockville Center when high school happened. He has no high school experience at all. Hence why you can't make a show called Howard Stern in the high school years because you didn't go to Roosevelt in high school. You went to That's Rockville right. Center. Robin does some great laughing at the end of this uh, boring story of how it's here. Also, I got another theory one <laughs> before I forget. Maybe he's positioning to try to romance Eddie Murphy over the to try to get him to come on the show, but I don't think he'd appreciate him lying that they know each other because they don't. If Eddie comes on, now that's on his dream guest list. <sighs> Believe I thought it. he had met that when he he met that quote once he got Eddie on. I think and Neil, he had Neil Eddie. I thought that was the end of his his obsessional dreams. No, Ed, Eddie's still on that list. Yeah. Yeah. Eddie's weird because it's, you know, a greater career as he had 
in the 80s and 90s and he's kind of, he's, he's aloof like Barbara is so the more he stays away the more this is fascination with having him on as a guest like Saturday Night Live had him guest like I guess it was three or four years ago and it was a really big deal he had never done it it's because he just he hides he has these weird scandals that they, they want like a, a moratorium like a um statute of limitations on when they go away and so he when the when the heat dies down he's kind of comes out and does stuff the they had a i guess the mark twain award but it's weird the more eddie the more aloof eddie murphy is the more he desired he is by the pop culture zeitgeist i love that and i mean you almost doesn't it seem like that he's like aloof like he's like super aloof and weird and the more he's like that the more they want it's just like streisand it's really similar actually I heard you just you, you just snuck out one of my favorite words there. It is a great word. Moratorium. <laughs> I thought you meant, thought you meant psych, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, but this, things get worse, John, and this is going to hurt you the most because I know how much you love football. Uh, what do I know? I tell you, I, I, I am so glad I don't waste any of my time watching football. It's just too big an investment in time. I took up painting. If I was watching football, I couldn't paint. I wouldn't have any, because the only free time, I, I only get a couple hours a week to paint. You could paint and watch football. You kind of can. No, I couldn't. Howard, do you know if what I'm, you could do? I'm seduced by football. I, when I watch it, I'm all in. I can't multitask. Really? <sighs> They're right, though. You could just listen to the football. You could just throw a, a towel over the TV. Well, I mean, paint. obviously he's a homosexual, you know? and th those people, <laughs> those people tend to not, not like sports, right? I mean, that's that's a given too. But um, with <laughs> isn't this really at its core him trying to look evolved from Neanderthals, as if he's not the stupidest human being on the planet, as if his show isn't the most lowest rung, fucking lowbrow bullshit for most of it, and football's beneath him. He's so evolved, it's going to rot his brain if he watches sports. He doesn't yeah. understand it. The hoi polloi, he doesn't want to be a part of any of that. It's, it's <laughs> he, can't, he has to hang out with, with, with all of the... The greatness. I mean, what's wrong with football? I don't know. He's just scary. He's alienating his audience. Well, does he think that Marianne from Brooklyn's going to be proud of him for that? Is that is that would she? He doesn't know how to. Him in sports is one of the most fascinating kind. Of, I mean, obviously he's a closeted homosexual, so he has to come in. But he knows <laughs> for a majority of his and the audience now is either gay or female. So that might be, yeah, that might so be. So he's it. thinking that he, there's nobody there. Back when like Artie was on, it was like Artie, Artie would be like, "Ah, oh, Howard, you got such a great crossover with sports." All the fans <laughs> are like, "Sport." So those people are all got that old guard of the Stern Show is all gone. So he doesn't feel that he has to play to anyone, even pretend that he watches sports on any level now, because it's uh, this show in sports is uh, has never been good bed, bed bedfellows. Yeah, oh, we've got, we'll, John, we've got a bit of throwback, uh, not throwback, a bit of pushback. Aaron says that, to be fair, NFL is far less exciting with no coke addicts. Bring back LT. How do you feel about that, John? Um, It is, yeah, I, I, I think it was somebody had said that, that they should just lift the whole, let everybody take steroids and let everybody do all the drugs they want and it would be the most exciting thing in the world. Take the rules away. I think the USFL had planned that, that they would just take away every, no rules. No, you could just do all the drugs you want, all the steroids you want, and let's just have at it. Let them, let it, the most corrupt. I think the XFL, actually, the Vince McMahon wrestled when the Vince, they tried to start the WWF, tried to start their own NFL, and that's kind of what they were going for to be the politically incorrect NFL. I see. I understand. I'm just trying to find somebody. There we go. Here we go. Now I'm copying some uh, shite here. How dare you! The guy who has 15 oh, to 16 hours, he sleeps how many hours a day? 11, it seems like 12. so much. And the oh, rest of them yeah. are watching gay television. And he claims he doesn't have free time. He, you know how, I, do you play chess? Isn't the most time consuming thing on the face of the earth? It might, uh, Yeah. If you do play, I don't play it, but if you did, yes, you could, it is everything. Yes, absolutely. Do you remember, 
I, I was going through, I was looking for Streisand stuff today, and I found it's it's the stuff you find while you're looking for other things. That are, he played Robin's boyfriend, Mr. X, in chess for three weeks straight. And at the end of it, the pre was, if Mr. X wins, he ha- Robin has to marry Mr. X. So they had an That's- ongoing chess game for three weeks straight. Every day on the show, they would play each other in chess for a half hour, for three weeks straight. You see, and at the, the end the of it, he had... The childlike mind. If if he wins, she has to marry Mister X. Like we're gonna ra- get behind that and enjoy listening to this. Like what? It, it is, there was some charm remember. back then about how they they framed it. It was different. Everything was just different. Everything was likable, and the people on and Mister X. I loved Mister X, and it was just a different. It just the people had charisma in most of those years and you just liked everything they did. And now it's just, everything is repugnant. Everything is repellent on the show. Now there's nobody likable, including especially the host. And this goes to this clip of him talking about having kids and how that affected his work schedule back in the day. Once you have kids, you, if if you're going to step up and be a husband, you got to take on some of the chores, you know, it's, uh, it's rough. I was bad at that stuff. I remember I, when my kids were young, I'd come home from the radio show, and then my chores were to go shopping and then take the kids to the park. And, and I was like, whoa, how am I going to do all these chores? I got to prepare a radio show for the next day. Oh my lord! So that how much how much was... audio? Yeah, how much audio do we have of him bragging about ignoring his kids and hiding in the basement? And uh, do you do you does anyone remember him taking any? Did he hide in the car the one time they took him to a festival at Randall's <laughs> Island? He hid in the car when the paparazzi came. Does anyone believe <laughs> any of that? You know how much audio I can dig up to contradict that? Like hours and hours and hours. I, I just. It's it's just you give someone a platform to just say whatever they want for hours, and this is what you get. Especially when it's a show about nothing. There's nothing. Yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing. Oh there's no content. God, look what control. we got here. Oh my god! Get ready, everybody, because look who's back from his Italian dinner. John, will you please welcome Dennis in a special voice for us? Give us it, John. Go for it. What what kind of fool has it upon many oh. pain and sorrow? Lovely and stuff. Now. Look at him. What do you got, Dennis Thanks. Street? Um, Zambuca. A little Zambuca oh. with uh, three uh, coffee beans in it for good luck. Loving you. Look at you. You're living your goddamn best life. I live the goddamn best life. How are you? Tell everyone about this dinner. You, oh, you it was had... with my uh, Italian Whoa. class. It was Some my Italian class. So, uh... Dindaloons, I think, is the word. Yeah, Thanks, Pablo. Oh, they start the super chats when Dennis arrives. Is that how it works? That's how it works. Thank you. you know, Thank I you, Pablo. Ask, answer that question, Bon. It's a great question. What, what? Uh, bon, how did you get into Stern? Oh, let me tell you a boring story. It had to be story. very serendipitous, right? Dennis, if you want to go to the toilet for a moment while I tell my Stern story. No, I used to watch. Um, I used to, in 1993, we got Letterman. We'd never had Letterman here before. So it would air at like 11 p.m. Uh-huh. at night. And I started watching and absolutely loved Letterman. Like we'd get it a day after it aired in America. And I'd never heard of Howard and I would see him come on a few times a year and I, back then, I'm not ashamed to admit, I thought he was incredible. I thought he should host the show. And you talk um, about Howard on Letterman. Yeah, Howard. Yeah, it was I an insane, insane appearances. Insane when I, talk and I remember I was 15 years old, so there's uh-huh. something there as well. Um, and I loved him. So that's how I got into him. But I could never see or hear the show. I pro- All I could say back then is oh, I think he has some kind of radio show in America. And then a friend from America... Uh, a year later came to our school because his dad got work here and I met him and probably the first thing I said was, wow, I love Letterman. And he was like, oh, everybody loves Letterman. And he was from Virginia, if that makes any difference. And it makes a huge difference. <laughs> it does? No, it does He was, no, uh, he was, he was <laughs> big. He was big time jock, and I just got all the Americanas, and I was like, I love, oh, love Letterman. And then he was like, oh, Letterman's great. And then I'm, I still remember in year 10 saying to him, 
my God, and that Howard Stern guy, and he said, oh, man, let me tell you about Howard. He said, "You've it, no, Howard is incredible, and he said he's as famous as just rock stars over there. He's, he's, he's like a god, and I was like, wow, really? And so I did not, I was not able to watch Howard's show until YouTube. So I started watching Howard. I remember in maybe 2009 or 10 maybe or 11, I was looking, I was just started thinking about Dice and I was like, I wonder what happened to him. So I just started looking on YouTube for Dice interviews and I found Howard one. And then I went, oh, shit, that's Howard. I remember Howard from Letterman. And then I saw Benji and Fred in there and I remember seeing them on the, looking at the computers and I thought, God, that's so weird. Who are, what are they doing sitting at the computers? Right. And eventually uh, I knew everything. So that was it. So that's how I became and then, and then it got so bad that you looked us up and I petitioned found you, us tell you. to engineer yeah. a Shuli hate show. I'll tell that, you. In, uh, let, that's this, how this you is, came on here. That's how it all it, started with it you. It still links back to Letterman because when I um, – I when the Letterman Netflix thing started and Howard was on, I wanted to see that in what was that 2017 or whatever? Yeah, or 18, 18. And I um, I was trying awful. to find it. I had to. I was looking on YouTube and it wasn't there. And then I obviously got it through um, different means. Yes. And um, when I was looking on YouTube, I found a Radio Gunk video of a weeks in review and I remember mm. I started I was like oh and you were guys were t- covering the Letterman interview yes with how yeah, oh my well. god I and I remember that. I remember listening to it and I remember my first thought was these this is insanity I've never heard a podcast and I and I thought you guys must have been worked with Howard or something I still remember yeah. and I remember writing in we the were comments so I wrote, we had to work I wrote with- <laughs> I, right, Dennis. I, I immediately wrote in the comments after listening. I wrote, "Wow, you guys hate Howard Stern so much, my God!" And I thought you must have worked with him. And then I found the website, and I emailed Monique immediately. I tried to join it, and you have like a twenty-four hour waiting time. And I got so frustrated. Like I listened to it, and oh, I hated I the, the podcast. I remember hating it. I was like, "They're all just screaming at each yeah. other," and this woman. Who I imagined, I imagined Grace? Monique looked like um, Cindy Lauper. That's what I always imagined her looking like. This woman with like bleached hair screaming. And I was like, and I hated it for the first hour. Like I stopped listening after a few minutes. And then I said, I've never listened to it again. And then it came up again a week later. And then I listened to it again. I just said, I'll listen to another episode. And then I absolutely loved it after the episode. And I thought you guys must have been friends with Howard because of what you knew. I couldn't believe yeah, when you a, first hear this show, the up information it. overload is absolutely like to hear stories and you and to hear all this stuff. And the best part was that I'd f- for a few years I'd been going, you know, it's weird how when Howard does an interview, after the interview and the break, someone calls up and immediately tells him how great it was. Right. I was like, I wonder if they'd like set, I wonder if he had bothered to set it up and get people to call in. Hmm. And it was all like that. And you guys... I'd always thought that you guys start saying fake callers, of course, and I'm yeah. going, oh my god, and fake all caller. these little things come to you, and it was amazing. I, I remember emailing Monique within that 24 hours. I tried to log onto the site and I said, "Excuse me, I have not been allowed to use the site yet. Why is that? I signed up eight hours ago. I can't log in. What? I, I, I need to be on this site." And she replied, VPN. "No, no, we have a 24-hour waiting <laughs> time." And and I said, "I love your show." And she said, "And I wrote, I'm from Australia." And it was very pathetic. I was fanboying, and I remember you, John. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you for about a year. And that's when the surely thing, I wanted to talk to you. I remember after all listening to so many episodes, I want to talk to this man. I love this man right here. I'm just going to bring him up on the street because John's. <laughs> oh, my he, God, that is a picture. The antics, John, I rarely laugh at comedy and John has done some amazing things. That's why I'm so into oh, remastering them. 
That's why oh I have God. to remaster because when I used to listen to them, I was like, oh, it'd be so great precious. if I could if I didn't have to turn this down all the time because the voices start screaming. It would be great yeah. if this had been mixed properly. So that was my mission, and I continue that mission. Thank you very much. The origin of the show was back on the old uh, PayPal shed, which was was the pre the Radio Gunk before Gunk and the Stern Fan Network begat uh, PayPal shed. Is I. I I posted, I would about once a month, I would post a thread. Hey, this, this is when podcasts first started. I would go, Hey, does anyone want to do a Howard Stern podcast? And nobody would respond to it. Maybe occasionally someone, would, Hey, that sounds like a great idea. And the thread would die. I would do it again and again and again. And people would just, uh, it just never went. I just kept pushing it. And then finally, Oddvark writes me and he goes, Hey, this woman Monique would love to do it. And I'm like, what? And then she went and got Grace, and then we threw together the. It was really Chet Hanks that started it, when 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 Chet Hanks threatened Howard with his life, yes. and and Adam Levy and I tweeted the the tweet to Adam Levy. Adam Levy wrote a, a an article on it. Who works for the Daily Mail, by the way, now, and uh, on in the, what was it called? What was the old gossip site? It's not. It's still around. Um, Radar. Radar, thank you. Radar Online, And then yeah. that was our first Adam show. Adam Levy. Yes, I've just remastered your interview with Adam Levy, which was excellent. Um, he was out exactly a few times. Dorian. I missed that guy. I got to find one. I got to gotta bring him back. I, I don't know what I, I – again, he's got a life. He's writing for the Daily Mail. I would just love to talk to him again. Now, Dennis, I'm going to play this clip and I'm going to have you – comment on your thoughts about the Sirius XM Wednesday event blues that Howard has. Oh, Here's what I can't figure out. Fucking Sirius XM, company I love, I'm a team player, blah, blah, oh, yeah. blah. <laughs> they say to me, they want me Wednesday to show up at this event they're having. Ugh. I still don't understand what it is. I don't even know if I'm allowed to talk about it, or maybe I am, maybe I'm not. They're like, can you show up at this event? I go, what time is this fucking event? <laughs> oh, 11 a.m. No! I go, 11 a.m.? In Manhattan? Do you mean on Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday. Listen to this. Figure this out. This is, this is what blows my mind because I can never figure out how to schedule stuff. They go, Wednesday at 11. I go, don't I do a radio show till 11? No, you no, don't. No, no, no. You can get off the air at 10. I said, okay. And then I got to go over, like right after our radio show. I need my nap. Now I got to go speak at something that I don't even know what I'm speaking at. I don't even, I mean, you know me, I don't want to go anywhere. Dennis, I mean, give us, give us your right, thoughts. So Here you go, center is, screen. Jesus Christ. So this is their, uh, <laughs> God, I, I He's a partner. So He's a partner. If that oh, I, I, that's why I asked him to partner. I, I don't know how long talk. I've been saying this. And like, You're so crazy. This is their, uh, I believe it's their quarterly, their quarterly uh, uh, investor meeting, I believe. Who's picked because, it up, Dennis? What what network has it? What, it's gonna be we... it's gonna be uh, they're gonna live stream it, and uh, okay. because uh, they have to be public, it has to be publicly done. Who's moderating it? Uh, it's not gonna be my. It's gonna, their own moderation because it's gonna be their own. Um, I don't want. I need someone to ask some questions. Uh, can't, so can't take they're, they're, all right. So there. the press release on this, it's gonna be their next generation. <laughs> Industry and press review will showcase a new serious streaming app as well as an upcoming in car innovations, new programming coming for uh, Sirius XM, the service refreshed brand, and more. It'll be streamed live to investors and the general public. Blah, blah, blah. Not more or less, demand. Dennis, right? What? You never get more. Not more, less. You'll never. Oh, there's definitely going to be less. <laughs> so, you know, and the thing is, so <laughs> there's, there's so much with this. All right, so obviously he's – him and Buckwold, obviously – they've obviously manipulated to get something else for him. Yeah, he has Not, something Without giving coming. anything. He doesn't do there, anything for nothing. Right. There, there's something else in this for him. He's playing He's playing stupid. So either they're going to enhance his stuff that he has online, which I'm thinking it will be, uh, probably give him something more in the <laughs> app because the app's a piece of garbage. And everybody out there that uses the app knows that – uh, it's uh, garbage. Um, nice, Benjamin. Sirius uh, will now be in stereo sound, sound for so, your pleasure. You know what's you know, you know? Here's the part though that's really should be aggravating to anybody. The dude has a studio in the building. They're going to be doing this pre this press thing in. <laughs> it's in that building. Yeah. It's not anywhere else. It's in Sirius's building. 
He literally mm-hmm. could go do his show and yes. walk down the hall and be on the air. But yeah. because he's such a lazy bastard, he is now at home and he's going to have himself helicoptered in, I guess, so he can make it. I mean, the dude doesn't do The dude hasn't done a show till 11 o'clock in, you know, since Jesus left the Jews. I can't remember the last time he actually really did an 11 o'clock show. There's just no yeah. situation, Dennis, yeah, nothing. where he can't paint himself as a victim. Victim. Right. right. So even he's in the same building, he's going to speak for what do you think is this, 20 minutes? And he can't not handle, he's not even going to do most of the speaking. He's probably no, he's, gonna, he's probably has horrible, pre-prepared, shitty Benji lines written out. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. He, oh, it, as you said, of, John, he can't host it. You, think, you, think yeah, you're of, right. Think, he can't oh no, host no, it. Witch is going to host it because she is the CEO. So this is a this is a this is an investor call. So the thing is, he's going to look like he was when they did the summit. I mean, I, I'm, that's what I'm predicting. Either that, or rock <laughs> roll hall of fame. It's going to be that disturbing. Because he he has absolutely no ability to connect with an audience at all. Yeah, zero what's point the, zero. What's the and, bet? He kicks it off with a. I, I didn't want to be here for this, but oh, oh absolutely, God, yes. absolutely. God, the, God, victim, yes. the victim talk yep. will be there. Um, but you know the thing. The thing is, you you talk about hitching your your horse. You know, you're hitching, hitching your cart to a horse that's half dead. Yep. I mean, most people don't even know who Howard is. Most people don't even think he's still on the radio. I mean, you know, no, he I think has, you nailed uh, it, Dennis. There's something no in it presence. for him. There's some what? money. There's some bonus. There's something in it for him. He has no mo- – this- he doesn't do anything without a ulterior motive. So it's just, just up to us to find it. We have to dig for it. Yeah, it, it, well, we'll find out, especially with that call. We'll know because I guarantee it's something giving him more and not having to do any more work, which is – going to be oh yeah you're about. not gonna get more it's no, not no, gonna no, no. He, he doesn't do he doesn't do any more work that, that, that's crazy talk you don't no, you no, know no, what's no, great no. about it what's great about this is that robin which i always love she just throws him a Under throws him for six yeah this is so classic robin just sleep uh. all day thursday you'll get right back <laughs> wow yeah, right <laughs> and i lose all thursday i it, it's just then i started tantruming around here saying i should have wednesday off but I don't want to take Wednesday off. I want to do my radio show. My fans like it. Howard, <laughs> what time would have worked for you? I'm just curious. Like, what's the time? That no you time. Nothing. I know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Nothing works for me. Everything is scheduled down to the minute with me. So he he doesn't want to do anything extra. No. That's, so that's what he's other... saying. At least he's being honest. Like, it, yeah, I wouldn't want to do it either. And to either Go... Then either kill yourself or get off the stage. Retire, exactly. old man. Get off the stage. Know when to call it quits. Like, every great entertainer knows how to get off the stage. He doesn't, but he wants it both ways. Kill so yourself or not, get off the stage. It's but not heavy you're... lifting either. No, it, nothing is. No, nothing minutes, is they want. They'd just be saying, do five minutes. That's nothing. He, for, for these people... That kind of thing is nothing. He just Let's walk, put this in other perspective. people would just finish the show, walk and do that, be done. Let's put this Go in Dennis. perspective. Yeah. He sleeps eight hours a night minimum. Minimum eight hours mm-hmm. a night. Then yes. he takes a nap during the day. This dude is in bed like twelve hours a day. I mean, you talk about the epitome of lazy. Yeah, and he works yeah. nine hours a week. It I mean, this, so, this is the epitome of lazy. I mean, he, he sleeps so much, Dennis, that he had to make up he had to make up a euphemism for napping and calls it transcendental meditation. Yes, exactly. so it didn't look like <laughs> nice. you might as well be nice. dead. You're sleeping nice, 15 Jenny. hours that you might as well be dead. Exactly. He, you know, the thing is, like he said, he woke up at 3 a.m. You know, he realized he got seven at least seven hours of sleep. I mean, yeah. most people don't get seven hours of sleep total. He was up at 3 a.m. and and got had seven hours of sleep already. And he's still right. two more hours to go back to bed. At least two more hours, maybe three. Do you remember Artie the- yelling at him for blowing off Gary's party? Left, yes. Gary's, you know, I had that. Yes. I made that saga. And Artie's like, "You had fucking Friday off and Thursday off. What are you tired for?" It was a really good. It was the first time someone scolded him for that fake sleep victim thing. And Artie's like, "You had two days off to do nothing. You don't lift a finger. Why would you be tired at a party with forty-eight hours to sleep?" You don't do well, anything. Well, I mean, today he came. It's Monday, right? He came in today and he had all the energy of a rug. I mean, seriously, there was well, th- no energy, none, zero. That's why we talk about Dennis when Streisand insists on you know doing the interview at ten. That this show, is ne- there's no reason for the show to be in the morning. The afternoon energy 
especially when it's no, someone as lazy and as lifeless and as passionless as him. The only way you're going to get an energy is moving the show. No, 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 no. He'll no. complain at that point. He won't have any energy. Wait, no, no, no. Uh, 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 he won't have energy at 10 o'clock. No. He'll have less. Because he, no, you, know, you, he, you could see Dennis when he's interviewed, you could hear the difference when the show, the roast they used to do at night, and the that stuff was also they, ten years ago. That was ten years ago. This who, is an old man. This is an old man. That oh eats yeah. five almonds a day. He'll find he a way no to complain energy. no matter what time you. Oh, put it wait. Out. Listen to how um, pissed he is about this. He just talk, starts going on about the city and he, how he oh, hates the Christ city. Sake. Listen I to this. In today. I was thinking about that, but I don't want to. I want to be uh, out here. Uh, yeah. I want to be. I don't like being in the city. But at least if you're in the city. I hate being in the city. Okay. I hate the city. I always have hated the city. No, you I'm a country Jeez. boy. Yeah, yeah I don't there a long time. My parents would bring me in. I'd be scared out of my mind. Manhattan oh. scares the fuck out of me. <laughs> I don't know why. Since I'm a little kid, I was just like, I don't want to go. Please don't make me go to Manhattan. So I, I don't like to spend a lot of time there. So Not he was just... so scared of man- he was so scared of Manhattan. He bought a, 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 a an apartment that that's that's ten thousand square feet near Central Park. He's so terrified of Manhattan. Not and just that, that. in, in the middle of the city. In the middle, in the middle of the city. Have, yeah. Does he have a point there? Is Manhattan scary to no. you guys? Not where he is. Now where he is, isn't it just rich people wandering? It's around? a rich people area. Trust me. There's nothing to be scared of. <laughs> And Mr. Mr. Judy Tanuda, if you are you still there? Yeah, if you are, I was going to um, invite you on to the show today, but I didn't know if um, it was a bit country too boy. S- country boy, yeah, Affy, oh, yeah, Affy, country boy. D- D- Howard, Howard would die in, in just a rural part of the United States. He'd die. <laughs> and now he starts talk. He pivots to. The re- this showing you how much effort this guy puts into the show. It, a little, just just an art ramble from Howard. Like this is your connoisseur of art. You know the the artists I'm attracted to are the uh, early Dutch watercolorists, the right. uh, English watercolorists. Uh, some of the uh, beautiful work of uh, oh, I, I told you Friedrich or Cat- Friedrich. Catalano. Uh, <laughs> what uh, about Monet? Uh, not so much Monet. Oh. Really? Yeah, but uh, I'm not a real art historian. Uh, no, I know no. so I know some art that I really enjoy. Like um, I just bought the books of um, the the sketchbooks of uh, John Constable that are fucking brilliant. The way he would look at a scene and then draw it, and uh, that's the kind of stuff I like. I'm not putting anybody down because I don't have the right uh, to. I'm not that so, good of a. Uh, oh. So it's a caller you could hear in the back. A caller called in Fake. Howard. Tell me about your favorite artist, fake. please. Right, right, that's fake, 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 fake. And uh, do you want to hear a shitty ending to a shitty show? Well, Robin, I've uh, run out of steam, to, to, to be quite honest. <laughs> See, this is what we were talking about. You're now out of steam, so, and yeah. it's time to start the show tomorrow. Tomorrow we're starting the show at 10 a.m., because I'm going to talk to Barbara Streisand at 11, but... Uh, as I can tell you now, it is now ten twenty nine here in New York, Jeez. and I am completely out of juice. <laughs> I do not. I don't know. I'm going to try and somehow stay awake, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. Ugh, and finally, dick. let me tell you about Total Wine and More. Wow, what a dead read! <laughs> yes, folks, what is four thousand dollars a minute? Uh, total. Let me tell you about Total, total Wine, wine and, and More. more. Oh my God, that's that's Jesus. It, it's unforgivable, really. Thanks, I mean, uh, David. We should be paying you, buddy. <laughs> read David's uh, comment. Yeah, read, read David. Oh, just Put it back up there. Come it. on. I know, I'm bringing it back. John, uh, you, how you, give uh, us a read, John. Okay, yeah, read. actually, Mr. Feeney does lend itself well for David. Please. Oh, yes, uh, please. please. Yes, please. Go ahead. Yes. Mr. Feeney. On the straight guys as a voyeur. <laughs> if that's interrupted by anything, he loses it. Uh, well said, <laughs> David. He's always in that mode. Well said, David. Oh, who's it? Who's it? The, the, the mockery I, uh, It's a great word. I, curate, I love it's my yeah, favorite, that, that, one that's, of my favorite that, words. That's right up his word. Was it's it so... Kive or Reno or Sternwig? It says, Howard, you run out of steam miraculously every day at the same exact time, no matter what you're th- I mean, it's like a countdown. I do a yeah, countdown wow, now well, in, the, in the mockery thread. As you know, it's coming. 
You know it's Man coming. Man who had no steam in the first place. Yeah, no, no. It had, there was zero, zero point zero energy today. It was embarrassing. Wait, I got to show you. So I, I commented that he likes watercolors because Photoshop has the the thing to do it. So Biznick did this. Just pull that up. Um, oh, look yeah. at this. <laughs> there it <laughs> is. I saw that too. I saw that. <laughs> Oh, that's classic Biznick. I can't yeah. read Absolutely this classic Biznick. Look at that. I mean, that I is utterly... <laughs> look at that. Look at Bobby that. Knight. See, see, even see how the Photoshop does that, though? It makes it look like it's been, it's been, you know... No, it's, it's emboss, emboss it, function, I think. Embossing, yeah. Yeah. Dear Bobby so, Knight, I hope this beautiful note finds you. Exactly. You can cover the Bobby, Bobby Knight thing. That was insane. <laughs> that was insane. That was literally the most insane thing I ever heard in my entire life. Biznick, you kid, but evidently this is exactly what Howard does in his free time. Oh, absolutely. Gay, gay <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> so see Dan says, and I believe every word of it. Oh my god, I love that. I got a quick uh I got something interesting here. Well, where's my thing in me? For Frank the Tank and Super Trooper, I agree with that. I would love to have Grace back on. Uh as a guest, I, uh, whatever, in the next month or so. Sweet woman uh, didn't work out. <laughs> it's weird, but she kind of sounds like uh, Nicole Wallace from MSNBC. But I always got along with Grace. I would love to have her back for a guest appearance. I agree with you. This is something uh, interesting. Yes. So I'm remastering and I'm, I found this. Um, it's coming up this weekend probably another three episodes I've remastered and I just want to give John the props for this. This is, can I ask you before you do, how long does it take you to do that? Uh, these took a long, maybe five hours. I want to thank you. I don't think you get enough credit for how long it takes. See, I thought you had a, I thought it went through the remastering machine. Like you stuck it in the remastering. You can't. You're going through specific. That's crazy. Best of moments, right? And putting it together. Thank you. Now you're He's no, I'm, doing it. I'm taking the episodes as they were and just fixing the sound levels so Good one luck. person isn't screaming. But that's but i um, I found this um this one was so great, John, because you hosted the greatest hits episode in 2015 near the end of the year. And you did just a fantastic I've got a little excerpt <clears throat> from the video that's come that'll be coming this. up. You do you, you you hosted it in Baldwin voice, uh, okay. so I have created a, a little visual feast for you, and we're gonna just sit back for a couple of minutes and listen to John. He would he hosted it in Alec Baldwin voice and would intro the, the segments that had been trimmed down of the best of of that year. So just just have a listen to where John can go when he just writes a beautiful intro hello here's the thing i am master thespian alec baldwin and i welcome you to the first ever best of radio gunk i have starred in films like talk radio the hunt for red october <laughs> the marrying man prelude to a kiss glenn gary glenn ross where i stole the movie in a mere 15 minutes malice the getaway where my ex-wife was a cunt. The shadow, two bits. <laughs> a streetcar named Desire where I got to mimic my hero, Marlon Brando. The juror, Heaven's Prisoners where I got to see Terry Hatcher's cans. Ghosts of Mississippi. <laughs> the Edge, Mercury Rising. Thick as Thieves, Notting Hill. Outside Providence, where I had a Massapequan New England accent. <laughs> State and Maine, Clerks, Pearl Harbor, Cats and Dogs. The list goes on and on. Oh, you want me to list some more? Be my guest. The Royal Tenenbaums. Meet your meat. Path to war. Very underrated war <laughs> picture. What I'm very passionate about. The cooler uh, of which I was nominated for an Academy Award in Upstage, Maria Bello and William H. Macy. The Adventures of Pluto Nash. A film I did for my daughter, Ireland. <laughs> before she turned into a raging A. Cunt herself. Thomas and Friends, <laughs> where I was narrator. Another one for the rude little pig. Along came Polly with the 
Late great Philip Seymour Hoffman, oddly not a Jew. <laughs> Nick Tuck, a brilliant cameo, which was not nominated for an Emmy and should have been. The Aviator, Elizabeth Town, Dr. Seuss's The Cat in the Hat, a movie I did for the rude little pig, my daughter Ireland, <laughs> fun with Dick and Jane, The Departed, Oh, Another God. film I stole in a mere 20 minutes. <laughs> the Good Shepherd. My Best Friend's Girl. Madagascar. Escape to Massapequa. It's complicated. <laughs> Saturday Night Live, of which the host is better than the goddamn cast. <laughs> and Brilliant. my Emmy Award winning stint as Jack Donaghy, based on Lorne Michaels' 30 Rock. Oh, John. I must have been out of my mind back then. I barely remember oh, doing that. You were amazing. Jeez. It was a pleasure <laughs> to remaster these. Oh you, my god! The I mean, Ireland, the, the, the Ireland best... Baldwin callbacks. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. And and the best part is that, oh my god! At the end of that episode, um, there's a little bit of. I'm just queuing it. Uh, but, a little bit of Monique, and it works perfectly because you've got the Bee Gees, John. There's a little bit of just Monique and John talking, which, again, is just it's just so lovable. Like, listen to this. My father used to play the Bee Gees all the time. Like, oh. Sing it for me now. That's such a great song. Go for it. And we got nothing to be guilty of. Our love is what a million we are, and we never let it end. We are devotion. I'm gonna end with that song. We got nothing to be guilty of. Our love is part of the million nails. We are, and we never let it end. We are devotion. Stop doing him. He has the worst of all of their voices. I know, but that's how he does it. That's how he can't keep up with Babs. <laughs> he can't keep up. Wow. With the smooth, I'm not doing it. Babs is doing it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I'm cutting you out right this I don't moment. I want to hear you. And we got nothing. And we got nothing. And we got nothing to be good. And I'm in your name. <laughs> God, I don't even remember this. <laughs> now I want to listen to that whole uh, duet they did. They do a few songs. John, I love your work. I, and for people um, asking, um, when I finish 2015, yes, there will be a companion video called Arm Sings with a, a compilation of the whole year of John singing, which will be just mind blowing. And well, thank you. The crazy thing about that is you coincidentally got that clip and had I no know. idea Barbara Streisand when was going to be When you came on, I said, show. you've got a Bee Gees as well. I've got a clip. I was like, this is, this is why magic Streisand can happen is half of that. Yeah, it's crazy. This is, this is why, I mean, it's emotional. I'm feeling emotional. I feel like, <laughs> It's... I always felt like Whitney had missed out. <laughs> there you go. This is... So I want to. mocking me because I said I got touched by Depp saying that about Amber Heard's sister Whitney. No, I did too. Don't yeah. don't worry. I started crying when Isaac was on the stand. Remember? And he started Isaac crying, Bruce, and then yep. I started crying. Oh, I was very emotional. You uh, can act now... like a man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it though. Um, now, John, shall we? Let's let's. I mean, oh, well, what, what am I thinking right now? What are we After thinking? all of that, why am I not doing this? It's an arm, 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 arm again. <laughs> That's you know, Sarah played that the other day. Exactly. Yeah. I was on the show when she, oh, she just uh, remember we, uh, she played it at the end when I was on weeks ago because I. I begged her. Um, I hope she's continuing playing it during the show whenever you hit a home run. And it's constant home <laughs> runs. Do you ever get tired? And ask, I've got a question for you, John. Going back to 2015, you you mentioned that you drink six pots of coffee a day. Do you I still did? drink that much? No, I didn't say six okay. pots. 
a, a pot. Six pots. Good no, lord, even I don't drink that Why? much. He just said eight. He said a eight. pot of coffee is not really a lot of coffee. It's like if you it's, filled it's up like, a twenty something ounce. It's twelve. Cup. It's twelve. No, a full pot is twelve cups, which is uh, seventy two ounces. Yeah, so I'm, six I'm a very or clinically one is too much. One pot myself. is too much. It's concerning me. Even but I would consider says... that's a little much. I drink oh six cups God. of coffee a day. That's a little much. You don't that's get headaches six... if you don't have enough caffeine? No. Oh, I do. Yeah. I, I'm a big migraine sufferer. I have to. I'm worried. That Grace says in the episode that she's worried about you. And to the people in the chat, yes, I did ask Monique if I could reach out to Grace to bring her on the show. <laughs> and, and the response I got oh, Frank, yes, was yes, Frank. not not repeatable. So cleaning out the computer. You have a phone number? No, but what? I can get to her. I can. <laughs> okay. I can. I, I got her number. If you want to? What? That was I, weird. I would love to have her on. Let's but... call Grace on the air right now. Oh, <laughs> I, would... I was a BG holic in high school. Oh dear lord. <laughs> Say what you will. They're corny of the time or whatever, and they're they are supremely unique and original. Nothing sounds like them. You know, they they're the last. Thing. Think about it. They're the last band to really have a harmony. If you yeah, really think about yeah, it, there's really catchy. after them there really was nobody else doing that. It's everyone's guilty, but then it's just yeah. anybody sound like the Gibbs. They no they, nobody they, did. They That's play the their thing. own shit. They write their own music. I got no. Pr- and they've actually been on Howard Show a few times. No, I, I joke about it, but yeah, you know the thing is they they had the harmony and they were able to. They really did go a long way with that. And uh, you know Barry was actually very good. Unfortunately, you know he came to an early end. But he was actually he was pretty entertaining. He was a very Andy. entertaining guy. What? Andy came to an early end. I mean, Andy. Now Barry, yeah. well, Barry lived. Yeah, Andy Gibb. And, you know, he, uh, he came to a little too early of an end. But, uh, oh, well. Who was but, he yeah. on Gibb? Uh, Cla- Clarence? Was it a, it was a it third was... Gibb? Jesus Christ. He looks nothing like his brother. Barry. Clarence? Uh, is it Clarence? Oh, I forget it. Who Something like that. Three Gibbs. It was th- Somebody it was in the th- chat's going to get it. Somebody asked it because there's three of them. It was, is he the Maurice, one, Maurice. Yeah. Maurice, yeah. Maurice, Maurice yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Benjamin. I got. I didn't look God. at your thing. I got. Now we've got you some. You the best beards. Here we go, Johnny. Barbara Streisand, energy hypocrites. Okay, you Dennis. Kick off uh, with that? Yes, I, I have a bunch of Streisand stuff, and I'm saving some You've got for great tomorrow. Stuff. This is part of you know, and there's no big celebrity that Howard can't be. So this is Howard eviscerating Barbara Streisand for being an, yes. a, an energy advocate hypocrite. Now, when you play, it's either the first or the second one. It is frighteningly, eerily similar, a parallel to Howard's life. Now, uh, yes, he brings up the residents. Listen close to how that's this it. it. Oh, it's crazy. Uh, uh, Vinny sent me this thing that uh, Barbara Streisand has a website. Yes. Yeah. The website she gives like political messages and this week's political message is about how all Californians need to conserve energy and fuel. What do you think her mansion burns in fuel? Well, they did this story, squealed and said, you know, what a hypocrite. She is one of those nuts that owns places all over the world, but especially her Manhattan apartment she's never in. She leaves the temperature at 42 degrees. She, she's one of those people who has to have a cold room when she yes, walks in. They, also, they say, well, basically the Manhattan apartment is now storage for her furs. Yeah, there's That's nobody in it. So cold. And they keep it like a meat locker. So she's burning fuel. She drives around in a limousine. And she's private planes. And telling people. Yeah, put her in, why, how come she doesn't own an electric limousine? Like right. an electric she's car. not in any electric yeah, car. Yeah, but wow. Basically, basically, she's walking anywhere. Malibu Estate is three houses. Right. And that she keeps running up and running all the time. Yeah. Can you imagine? Oh, oh my, the hypocrisy. So, this is crazy, hypocrisy. right? Yes. This is crazy. You, uh, so, you know, the thing is, that first of all, A, that needs, that needs to get sent to her somehow. Uh, because, oh, good yes. lord. Is she on uh, Twitter at all? No, she's not on social media. She's sure. Uh, you know, if we mean make a TikTok and freaking put it in, her people will see it. Because, I mean, you know, I remember him bagging on her constantly. And, and I remember that because it was like, you know, what's so funny, though, is hypocrite Har- Howie saying that at that time that's the best mm-hmm. part and Dennis, oh, everything in that parallels his he life is. now the he residents the, the only difference is that he has absolutely no beliefs 
And so he'll never, ever say anything that isn't popular with people he wants to be with. So that's the no, thing. No. That's the only What's difference. What's the power consumption when Howard isn't at, at one of his locations well, for at six the Florida, months? All right, at Florida, Ugh. you have to have the air conditioning on all the time. He lives right. at the beach. You have to get the humidity out of that house. That bill has got to be when he's not there. It's got to be, oh, God, I think it's about seven times my size of my house. That bill's got to be like ten grand a month electric bill. Easy Didn't, ten grand Dennis, a month. who was it in the in the in the on the forums? Was it you or someone else that printed his property taxes one point three million a year? Uh, I think Monique got that. It or, is Monique. Monique. I, I don't. But does I, that yeah, sound right? Like one point three. Wait, one point three million dollars a year <sighs> for a place he's he's barely there five months. He's a year. there twenty percent of the year, maybe. No, he's there about forty percent now. Forty percent. Uh, yeah, I, I want to do a chart on his residence uh, during the year and see where he is. Well, we have we it because he's there. Last year, he was January, February, March, April. May, he was there for five months. Yeah, that's good. I, I'll go with that. So five out of 12. Yeah, he was. It was it's about 40 percent. And because he's doing it for taxes, of course. So but the, but that place, though, you, you think of the air conditioning, all the fertilizers is going to make that lawn green because in Florida, that doesn't happen naturally. Uh, all that, all that landscaping needs special, lots of water. I mean, he uses tons of water in that place. It's crazy how much water he uses, and and all the electricity and all the fertilizer and chemicals. Yeah, Mister Mister Minimalist, for an eighteen thousand square foot house in Florida that he doesn't what's, go to. What's the Hamptons property tax? It think? was less. I think that was only, if I remember, it was like six hundred thousand or seven hundred thousand <laughs> a year. I thought Beautiful Florida less. Benjamin. <laughs> I read about Monique's illness in Dan's papers. <laughs> ah! We gotta we gotta repeat that to her tomorrow. Uh, Dan's papers briefed everybody on Monique's illness. Let her, <laughs> but, uh, that's, that's how I found out she wasn't on tonight. I heard it was here. on the news, the yep. nightly news. But you know. so, but uh, you know, and then Manhattan when he pays tax, he owns that. So there's tax. We haven't looked that up, but that's got to be friggin' pricey. It's ten thousand square feet of apartment. You know, you figure he's got to be paying, he's got to be paying, like, in Manhattan, he's got to be paying a half million a year easy on taxes on that, just because. So it might, it might cost, like, three million to not be there a year, each year. I think Ashley yeah. and uh, A-Wine stay there. That's I'm theory. thinking that, you know what, I'm thinking that also, if they're staying it's, there. It's too much of a wasted, he, I can't, he wouldn't be able to take wasting that well, kind of. But remember, yeah, he also said he helped. He was going through and throwing things out for them. Like he went over to her place, which sounded weird because he, lies he doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, he doesn't go anywhere. He would He's never not... go to some other part of the city, no matter where. And no one saw him on theory. the street. How right. much therapy did he claim like to go to, and nobody saw him walking into because these he did it. Offices. He did it on the phone. Right. He was the original right. on the phone person. But now, so yeah, plus that. Remember, that's ten thousand square feet. That that apartment. It's two floors. They could easily take two thousand square feet, which is still bigger than my house and and, and he wouldn't even notice there's still 8000 square feet of of apartment left just think I think part that. of their wedding present was Howard's like oh, you stay at Ralph stays stay at the there. <laughs> I, that's uh, true actually, I actually do think that that Ralph does stay there uh occasionally not all the time he does have his place in Jersey City but you know it's not that far away I, I, and, I think he frames it where I'm I'm going to set up your clothing in the apartment. Yep, exactly. And that I'll leave it there for you. And Beth will take it back. Yes. Oh, absolutely. And then he stays there days at a time and no one says anything. And, oh, uh, but yeah. I, I'm, I'm, Ooh. I'm betting anything that a wine and, uh, Ashley stay there now. How oh, bad? Uh, Crazy more on three this. floors. Holy Jesus. I think it's three, it's three, four. Two. It's like, it's like, uh, if anyone who watched, uh, uh, different strokes. It's like having three Mr. Drummond penthouses on top of each other. <laughs> I love that analogy. That's it. I is I mean, it, it is. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, you know, it's, he, it's, that is such a perfect analogy. It's Thank it's you, so guys. creative though the analogy. I love that. So now, big. I mean, next, can't, uh, you can't wait. But the thing is, let's put a period on this. You just can't out there. You can't comprehend how big that apartment is. No, I mean, you can't. It, it is. It's literally like a store. I mean, if you go into a big store, not like a big box store, but just a Big store. That's how big his apartment is. Like I can't handle him using the word apartment. Like he's a fucking Travis Bickle's yeah, place in Times Square. It's just a penthouse. <laughs> I just looked at the uh, the list of all the people that have been blocked from chatting. Yeah. So. Oh, you could see that. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, Xavier's blocked like 
30 people. <laughs> so I've just unblocked you all. So I'm sorry, guys. Josh, I know you didn't do a thing he wrong. Needs, he needs Next three clip. Dudleys. More on Barbara. Not enough Dudleys in the world, Josh. We need more Dudleys more. in the world. A little Johnny more. Meyer. Get well. Get well soon, Dana Plato. <laughs> He's a little more on Barbara from the same energy hypocrite. She's telling people to conserve energy. She even says that you should put your thermostat to like 78 degrees when you're at home and 85 when you're not at home. What? For your yeah, what that mean? And they say she can't be in a warm room. She will start screaming. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, I'm sure it's a health condition for so her. She's a total friggin' hypocrite, this woman. She's insane. Why would you, you know, if you're keeping your temperature at 40-something degrees in Manhattan, why the hell you go on your website and start chastising and well, telling people what to do? They asked her spokespeople, and they said, well, Barbara didn't necessarily say this was for her. Oh, <laughs> for other people. Yeah. Everybody else can conserve. She didn't say she was yeah. saying So the little people. Yeah, I mean, if Barbara Streisand conserves... What good is that going to do? It's everyone else needs to do it. See, like, I, you know, Ed Begley always used to write it because it's like an open letter. He's got all these different graphics. From Barbara. Who goes on the Barbara Streisand I'm, website I'm, anyway? I'm laughing. You know, Vinny's on the Mariah Carey and the Barbara Streisand website. <laughs> wow. Perfect job. Wow. You nail it, man. I, I bet you they did that every day. And this is what that was. That's like 2001. That was a rotating uh, yeah. Jackie Chair, by the way. Vinny's sitting in that day. Those, that's what the, there was nothing worse than, like, Vinny sitting in. Instead of Artie oh, or Richard Jenny, or, yeah. But oh, um, the the, uh, the previous Johnny Meyer, none of this would be brought up. No, none of it would be brought up, Johnny. That's no, what I want you to do. Brought... I want everyone to listen to the Strazan interview and listen to this is the guy who really and versus what he says to her during the interview. I, I, I'll, I'll be quite honest. I probably will forget that it's on um, because it's at ten. So yeah. Yeah. I'll set up a thread, but uh, don't expect me to be listening. I, I, I no, can't stand Barbara no. Streisand to start with. So Why geez. is he so desperate to get it? To, uh, to shift arm his arm nailed this one. Arm nailed this one perfectly. What is an arm? Well, so what I said, then, I mean, I said a lot about her. She, she, oh, you she, said she's that perfect for a closeted homosexual. Yeah, this yeah, it's right a gay man. Yeah, this is a gay man's Super Bowl. Yeah, and even I think Super Bowl. the gay stuff comes up in one of the clips I gave you. He makes a lot of gay jokes. He made a lot of gay slurs in one of the next clips of that. Uh, that it, it, exactly what we're saying. When you're hiding. Yeah, that's right. Let's when go to that. Closet. Goofing on is... Barbara Streisand's TV special. That well, might be bad. it, John. By the way, this is uh, Big Black. Uh, this is when – these are the days when Big Black would call in. And he did JD's job from a shitty apartment with a VCR and basic cable, and not even basic cable, and did it better than JD, and he's a far more likable. And they wouldn't hire Big Black to do JD's job, by the way, which I've always, I've always. Well, uh, you know why? The show is racist. Yeah, because you can't yeah, have black and <laughs> The only reason Rasan's on the show is he was grandfathered in from Pharrell. Well, and not it gives only him that, like a but token you know, on the West Coast. Yeah, ex and there's the other thing. Yes, he doesn't have Eric to see him. I love Big Black too, Frank the Tank. Oh, he Big was Black was Johnny hilarious. Yep. He actually was really funny. One of my favorite people ever associated with the show. Yeah. I wish we could if find him go. and have him on. Oh, I'd love to uh, get him on. So let's, let, without further ado, let's listen to some Barbara Streisand uh, conversation. Let's look back. Earlier, I was um, talking about my father's letter, which actually was a three-page poem. In verse, he wrote... To you I say that life is vain, oh, unless it raises you above. You know my inner thoughts. What is she yakking husband. about? Who sits through this? Oh, priority. Jesus Christ. I needed to hear. The homos are in tears. There's, there's even music to go along with life. life. <laughs> the homos are in tears and they have no idea why. Yeah. That's the sad part. Remarkable changes. I think I even made She's yakking. <laughs> They're applauding for the mirror has two faces. <laughs> Stuffed like... in the buttocks of this audience. You hear that? You know, there's celebrities yep. there, though. Like Joe Torrey's there. Of course. <laughs> Joe Torrey's in a coma. He is uh, a weird He's at a ball game. <laughs> I love my good looking man. He's happy someone knows him. He's alive. 
melody. Here's one for all you gay dudes. I'm singing it to my good looking guy. Look at your good looking guy. I bet you Jackie likes this. <laughs> yeah. I think I have a voice like Barbara Streisand. <laughs> Can't take anymore. I'm done. <laughs> Get some more Costume changes too, Howard. Yeah. You know? yeah. But you know she does this weird thing. She gets into a beautiful dress. Which is still Barbara Streisand. But then she sits on a <laughs> stool. It's weird. She needs a paper bag. <laughs> oh. Wow. Oh. Okay. If anyone remembers this, please send Streisand people this clip while he's kissing her ass tomorrow at 10 uh, a.m. Moving the show to 10 a.m. This clip's great, John. This is where you get Damn. into the real meat. This is Mark uh, Harris. Meat. Uh, meets. Barbara at a nameless Hamptons uh, okay, party. Yeah, this, is, this is great. This is 2011. He will not bring up the Hamptons mogul that they're at the house. I, when we were talking exactly. about this last week, he didn't bring it up. And I thought I remembered the celebrity, and it's not. He doesn't bring it up here, so he's afraid to institute who this. I mean, you can guess who you might think it is. I think it was is Jerry's it? house. I honestly think it was Seinfeld. It could be. Could be. That's as strong Seinfeld as any guess. Get, get Streisand and Connell. Thank you, Melvin. Melvin says, Dennis, arm, 2022 taxes in Florida home are, drumroll, $1,258,000. Oh, and oh that is, God. that's just the taxes. Yeah, Thank you, Melvin. Now, his insurance, because the house is so expensive, that's going through Lloyd's. That's Lloyd's of London. You, you're not getting regular insurance with that. So he's got, you know, whatever that rider is going to be. You're talking insurance that's probably... Uh, probably two hundred grand a year, three hundred grand a year, easy, easy, um, from Lloyd's Jeremy. London. Thank you, Ida. Jeremy. We love you, Ida. If if Ralph calls in no. after the Streisand interview to congratulate Howard, I will laugh hard. I don't think that he would will. Be I, very I don't, I don't funny. Think he will. It'll I be Marianne. When's the last time Marianne. that we've guys have taken? So I, I think it's part of the Marcy edict. So oh, all yeah. phone calls from fans for guests have been eliminated. As 20, per the Pelican brief, he never said it in the 20, thing we watched, but 2013. That's when it stopped. It, yeah, they that's when I traced it back to. I called. Uh, I tried to call Hall and Oates. He had Hall and Oates on right around that time, and they wouldn't. And I, they put me on hold and pretended that I could get through, and I had. To, I was going to do this whole thing. I was going to sing Daryl Hall with Zuzazu Zoo in it, and <laughs> I'm like, no, just do this song. It didn't get oh, released. Zuzazu, Zuzazu. <laughs> I was going to do that. Let's and it hear would have her. to get there's no way he would have dumped it. Let's hear this Streisand at the nameless Hamptons party. On vacation, I became friends with somebody new. Who? If I tell you this, your head's going to spin because you can't. I'm sure most people be like, Howard Stern and this person talking. Let's been, hear. Who is it? Uh, Barbara Streisand. Get out of here. <laughs> you and Barbara Streisand. I liked her a lot, too. Barbara we really what? hit it off. <laughs> and Jimmy Brolin. Well, that's who, we who know. He's, he's with. Yeah, we know him anyway. We interviewed him. Do you we remember? We did have him on the show once at you NBC, are. wasn't it? Yeah. I was like, yeah, I had your husband on the show. And <laughs> Bon, can you pause guess for a second? Get his pants on. Mm -hmm. So Howard lies again for no reason there. It's subtle. You'll hear it tomorrow. He was on in 1999 from the NAFTA convention in New Orleans. And he, she goes, uh, and NBC, right? Yeah, yeah, NBC. Yeah. And he just no. lied for no reason. It's a little lie, but why? And he knows exactly when it was. 1999, there's, there's 15 years in between that time. Yes. It, and he can't years, delineate yeah. time. It's so weird. He lies for no reason. Well, he, I mean, he's been, and it's beginning actually to, to try to go a little tangent here. He, he's actually getting worse. Yeah, he's because, getting worse. You know, much worse because now he's saying stuff that he did at K-Rock that he was doing at, at WNBC. He, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he, he literally he's is conflating, conflating now. Yep. That he's he did all these things there where he really didn't do a lot at NBC at all. I mean, that's the I mean, he was there for two, what, two years, two and a half years? Two so yeah, two and a half years about two and a half years. I mean, he really didn't do that much, but he was conflating like you know, all sorts of things, bits and whatnot that he did there. And I was like, no, or my favorite is when somebody's on the radio that's two years that you know, that's died or has a has a show and they're two years older than him. And I listened to him as a kid. Yeah, I was no, a kid. No, no, you didn't. No. No. Oh, R Richard Marks came out. I was a kid. Uh, Howard, he's yeah, 10 exactly. years younger than you. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, yeah, guys, Jeremy in the this. chat, Jeremy and uh, Super Trooper and everybody. Uh, Hell on Oates. Daryl Hall has done the show solo. And then finally, John Oates came in with him the year I'm talking about. 
initially Daryl Hall did the show solo with a guy named T-Bone from that show live from Daryl's house. And then the second time John Oates came, maybe the third time actually John Oates came in with him. Finally. It was the third time. Because yep. I think the second time is when uh, Hall was talking about killing deer because of yes, uh, the deer disease. ticks. Yes, deer ticks. that was the big yeah. uh, story from that interview. The fucking deer. <laughs> exactly. He, he he can't stop with the uh, with the Hamptons. There's more. You usually don't approach people. How did that? She. Uh, we were at a a, a friend's home. Uh -huh. a mutual friend. The friend said Barbara really wants to talk to you. She wants to meet you. It was an introduction, and uh -huh. we started talking, and then we sat down, and we kept the conversation going for like an hour. Could be really a old. fascinating woman. Of course, yeah, it could she be Barbara's Billy Joel. Yeah. Uh, listen, I know I love her directing a movie. I told her, I said, why the, why the hell don't you direct any more movies? We sat there, we talked, we measured uh, each other's noses. And then wow. Like, oh, stop it. By the way, very beautiful woman. Very well spoken and charming. He just said she needs a bag over her head. We had a long conversation. Why would you be surprised at this? What, do you think she was a ditz? No, I, I don't know. Listen, listen, when do I ever get to speak to a barbershop? When does anyone speak to me? You know I don't get to speak to, like, famous people. Wow. Most you know, famous people don't want to know me. No, well, we got into a very deep conversation. She designs things. We she talked decorates. about that. So, we talked about that. We spoke about a lot of things. Could you wait? Could you fathom the narcissistic conversation between these two? The two of them. Uh, yeah. Shallow. Uh, man. The shallow narcissistic conversation that these the two agony. had. The the uh, the narcissism score the two of them combined is eight figures. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's terrifying. But I mean, they had to absolutely be just. One upping or name dropping the entire freaking time. There's no way they weren't. It could be oh Billy Joel, gosh. some record executive. It could be, you know, there's all these weird moguls that live out there that you might not know them necessarily by. It could be, you know, pick your mogul who lives out there. Yeah, it would have to be Howard, somebody knows. So it's either Billy Troll, unless there's people Howard doesn't talk about. But it could be Harvey Weinstein. What? It could oh, be Harvey yes. Weinstein. Oh, oh, that's right. You, he I bet she knows Babs. Yeah, we have that picture of him in a yes. little party. I think that's the party because that's about the same time, isn't it? Harvey used to do favors for Howard's daughters in the late 90s. Yes, early 2000s. Got him into did. premieres and stuff. That's a great, I got a great interview. I got a great clip of him calling in. That's uh, why the horse, the horse was laughing so hard. We now have that meme. Um, yep. <laughs> with a big barnacle on its head. He's 81, Ida. That's right. Barbara's yeah, that's that, that's that's hip. You know, truck drivers across the country <laughs> want to hear what that has to say. John Mark Harris at oh, war. Yeah, I Barbara. just love Mark Harris, and I I know that he did a song on her, and I'm still looking for it because I saw it the other day, and it like you ever look something on Mark's friggin', and you see it one day, and the next day Google changes its search like where I just searched it, and it doesn't come up again, and it's some weird Dennis probably knows the internet. Oh, it's, it's oh, oh, the algorithm changes and like, like underwear. Somehow, I so I found the initial. He talks about his hatred of Barbara Streisand, but then he does a song, and I have to find this. Hopefully, I have it for the, tomorrow. But he talks about his hatred of Barbara Streisand, Mark Harris. And then there's nothing more you, there's nothing less you want than Mark Harris. Be it, to be on Mark Harris's shit list is one of the worst things you could ever be. I mean, that's well, a list you don't want to be on. Wait, especially it's Barbara Streisand and it's Mark Harris. <laughs> just just let he, that. Just he let really that... thinks that he's affecting her, and she's. Well, the other thing is because of his part. um, um persuasion you figure that he'd be the big fan oh my He's god gamma G man you're amazing how do you know that's exactly what this clip is holy shit that's crazy holy gamma crap. man ah, that's amazing we did friend of Judy. Have some projects in the works because as vinnie says you always have something going on right. either barbara streisand you're at war oh, with come on barbara streisand do you like uh do you know that barbara streisand division? doesn't ever spend any time thinking about you oh, why okay. are you at war with her <laughs> I think she could remember she threw me out of her house in 1964. She still has the same apartment here in Central Park West. I see. So you know more about her than she knows about Oh, her. no, I really don't care to know about her. So why are you at war with her? Her politics. Oh, you don't like her this politics. It's the time to unite the country, not divide. Okay. You are singing a song to her now, right? You have written God bless song. America. I defy her to sing it. She can't. She tried that at Clinton's inauguration. You're saying she can't sing God bless God, America? No, she really can't. She and and you can? That? Yes. Well, you have the um, <laughs> CD, God Bless America. Let me hear Mark singing God Bless America. You, have it? you don't have that. Yeah. At war with Barbara Streisand over her politics. I you want, like it, you want President Bush to make you ambassador of decency. What is that? <laughs> well, he is recognizing gay people in his cabinet now. Yes. 
by appointing me. You know there is no ambassador of decency. You know that. No kidding. Yeah, so you want to make up a position in the in the cabinet. Well, yeah. Right. And you're serious. I think the country needs yeah. somebody to quell all the anger <laughs> that's going on. And you think you're that person? <laughs> yes. Right. Oh, I wow. God, I miss Mark Harris. I, yeah, you know, he was it. the greatest. He's one of those great guests. One of those really super great guests. Because he was super unaware of just how unimportant he really was. And, and the foresight of Howard back then to have him on like this and think this would appeal I just, the delusions, and he was genuinely, uh, we're laughing at him, not with him, obviously. Well, absolutely. He kind of knows it, and there's just nothing like him. God, I agree. I, Crazy Robin, so Mike, true. Mike Mike McGinn, ambassador of fruits and nuts. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> much right. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. And you got a, a video to, yeah, to just, end us today. With. Ooh, good. I like videos. Dennis would know better than us. <laughs> yes, okay. More Dennis today about how uh, Sal and his psychic bullshit oh, and his Jesus. obsession with psych. This I, I hate all things psychic in regards to this show. They waste. And you realize that this this gimmick started when he was hanging out with the Long Island Medium. That's yeah. when this this gimmick started. I mean, because before that there was never any talk of any. It was <laughs> after. It was with the Long Island. Uh, medium and how and uh, how we're trying to glom on that with with the uh, uh, with Sal and then they started with the hypnotists. Yep, sorry, John. And no, yeah. that's okay. And so this is a completely ridiculously fake bit that's what we bought with a dumb. Which hypnotist. year is this? This is 2005. Yep. Yeah. So this is like when they started with yeah. Sal and yep. Sal. You get to see Sal's acting chops on display here. Oh, they're fabulous. Stuff out with these guys. You got it. All right. Gentlemen, in a moment, I'm going to hypnotize you. It's going to take less than a second. Take a long, deep breath. So I'll just put your arm down there for me. Breathe in deeply. Sleep. Now, way down. Deep. Wow. wow. I love that. So I understand you spent the night at Howard's house last night. How was it? It was phenomenal. Yeah? What did you guys do? First, we hung out on the couch. Yeah? Just sat beside each other like buddies? Yeah, it was good. Yeah? How was a great guy. What were you wearing? I was wearing jeans. Yeah? What were wearing? I was wearing white sweatpants, and he was wearing like a wife beater. He had on, um, he had on like an Adidas uh, sweat jacket, but he took it off. He took it off why? Just to get comfortable? Or? His tattoo is awesome. It was armed with the dragon. Was really cool. And Last night you're sitting right beside Howard on the couch. Three, two, one. You're beside Howard on the couch, interacting with Howard. Sal. What do you What do you see, Sal? Hey man, what's happening? This hey, is man. great. Yeah. What do you I think about you? I told you I'd get here. <laughs> what do you think of my? What do you think of my apartment? This is awesome. What do you think of my place, dude? You are the man. Yeah, they this like is it. Phenomenal. Hey Sal, you know how you would, like? Even though you were creeped out, I think something in the back of your head said, "You know what? This is what I like about Sal that he's honest." So I knew I would get here, man. I knew. I knew. <sighs> Wow. Oh my god, this is cringe. This is so cringe. It was <laughs> cringe. Did, did anybody it buy that so at the cringe. time? The audience bought it. Well, Did no, you I mean, it? I, 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 I heard it and I went, oh god, it was. I mean, back then, you know, you're still a fan. You're like, this, this bit sucks. I mean, well, it's, would, it's such a time killer. You know, they would spend oh, absolutely. hours on this shit back then. God, his acting, his acting, and he's acting now. He's rehearsing it. I mean, he, the only person that's worse at acting is Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Wow, as fake as the Sibian. Yeah. 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 And they spent a lot of time on that shit back then. Oh, that killed. Think about it. The Sibian would kill an hour. Yeah. It More. would slaughter an hour. Yep. Oh, Jesus. Wow. I think Benji wrote that script for him. Oh, I, I guarantee that. That, has, that stinks of Benji. Yeah, that's Benji's yeah. whole purpose is that shit. Oh, God damn. Nick, Nick, but you know what's has... worse? You know, you know what's more embarrassing is Richard in that. I mean, that is, is utterly embarrassing. Who I mean, has just... Howard moved the show for to the afternoon so far? What, what's our count? We got to keep track of this. Three, we got three Madonna, people so far. Madonna, Billy Joel. Uh, Billy Joel, you moved it? Yes. He All right. Huge so it's Billy four. Joel it's four, it's four, th four people now. I think it counted as a show in itself. Like it wasn't. The okay. Billy Joel thing was well over two hours, so I think it counted as a show. If you remember, he had in yeah. like Boys to Men and Pink and someone else Jeez. singing duets with Billy oh. Joel. It was like a huge deal. And then deal. Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger. Oh, at five. At five, because then it was also for um, 
Keith Zeppelin. Richards. No, no, no. Robert Keith Plant. Richards. No, Robert Plant was normal time. That's that was the morning. Pissed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was pissed. Keith Richards. Off. Are we counting the pre-taped one, Dennis? We think that yes, we're are, counting that because it was played at a time that no one expected a show to be on. Do you know that he was offered Tom Petty? And he and turned, turned him down. down. That was supposed mm-hmm. to be in the afternoon. Robert De Niro, he was offered in the afternoon and turned oh, it down. Oh, no. This is, why? This, this is right. I mean, you, pre-tape. Well, who wouldn't have kept, do it and pre-tape? It oh, gives a shit. Wait, crazy, crazy Robin doesn't know about Robert Plant? Oh, my God. You never heard of that? Oh, my that God. That's deal. the greatest interview ever because Robert Plant oh. was walking out. Literally walking out. He was done. He stopped we bring him up all questions. the time, crazy. We bring up. Dennis loves that interview. Oh, I Dennis kept calling him. Interview ever. He kept ever. calling him. Okay, Grandpa. Okay, yeah, Grandpa. Yeah. He was, he was literally amazing. calling him Grandpa. He got the information Howard was wrong. lost. And after, he, Howard was devastated. Like, was Neil Young the in break. the afternoon? What, Neil Young's no, been on. Neil, Neil Young's not unique. He's been on four no, he's times. He's been on the morning. He's been on regular time, Neil Young. He, he might so have the un- first time he's, moved it. So un- No, he's so uninteresting. No one's looking for him. But Robert Plant got really angry, and this is when he really got pissed off. I'm talking about Jimmy Page being the love of his life. He yeah, literally yeah. looked at him like he was an absolute ass at that point. It's he like, didn't know what he was walking into. If, no, um, he didn't. I don't know. Yeah. He was just done. He was just done with it. I, he crazy didn't Robert. know. He needed – sorry, John. Go. No, that's okay. For Dennis, I remember – this has got a few months uh, last year maybe – I put a medley of all the cringy moments from that interview, and I have them saved somewhere. I'll play oh, them for you. Oh, God, that's a great – that would be a great review because, my God, the cringy moments were – I mean, he's cringed before. This was like, oh, dear God. I went and got it's, the worst parts of it. It's it's really, really – you've never heard – I mean, he just uh, – he just, his, I mean, it was – if you – how – I guess – Plant's a really sharp guy, and Howard kept yes. getting his information wrong, and it was oh, yeah. him off. Like, and he knew that he wasn't really a fan, and he could see through it. And yes, it was... well, we're, we're, is... we're not the only ones. We're the we're the prime haters. We are ground zero for haters here. This isn't but... the only place that thinks that interview is a complete fucking debacle shit show. It's everywhere. It's not just us. So you don't... know, I mean, his is Howard's Howard's inability to just maybe put the, wrap that one up, but Howard's inability to Robert Plant was talking about him and Jimmy, him and Jimmy. And it's like Robert Plant was friends with John Bonham. They yep. were they were childhood friends. They've known each other for like way before they were in the band. And and Bonham's the one that got Plant into the band. So it's like <laughs> it, it's nothing to do with Jimmy Page. And, and Dopey Howard had not a clue. <laughs> not a clue. Josh Foster goes, Howard was slapping at the Marco Battaglia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a good euphemism for masturbating. I battaglia last night. The battalion. <laughs> he needed the uh, he needed the sit down from one of his people to say, "So you're going on Howard? Let me tell you about Howard. He's going to nope. go through everything and romanticize yes. it all. So you have to just let him do it and just expect and remember, to have weird. The questions are going to make you kind of uncomfortable. Bond, he didn't get any of that. He, he just Bond, thought remember, it was going to be like, yo. Robert Plant's father was a banker. I mean, he really was. He was, and he was very, brought up very proper. And the part of the interview that really I think pissed him off was just how crude Howard was. And he just didn't. He just yeah. was done with that. It was just like he, you know, he didn't want a crude interview. He doesn't do crude and he doesn't do interviews. And How much just, time did Howard uh, goof on Led Zeppelin for the plagiarism? Oh, Christ. Like playing he, the juxtapositions he, of all the plagiarism. He spent months. He spent months yep. when that came out doing that. Uh, honest to God. He was, yeah, absolutely. He spent months doing that. And he's, he's the worst fanboy ever. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm not Are sure what's going to happen with uh, Monique tomorrow. So <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. She's Josh Foster gave me weather. great. I'm, I'm definitely going to mark on my Bataglia after I get off here. I... Ah. Thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> but we will we'll find out what will happen because, I, I don't know, because Barbara, the whole Barbara thing has to be covered, but it's going to be at, after 10. So uh, stay. There will be updates from Monique on Twitter and on RadioGunk.com. And, Dennis, it was I'll wonderful try. to have I'll you. Have a, I'll have a thread, but, my God, I'm I'm not not really looking forward to it. I don't like either one of them, so it makes it hard. And I have to, I have to do some video stuff tomorrow. 
for my well, oh sh- for DJ's classic these- garage because I, <laughs> I, I, I you know hard show all weekend. Very happy with your subscribers are slowly increasing. You're getting they're, they're up to growing. The- I I've touched some nerves the last with the last one about ethanol. So I'm gonna I think I'm gonna double down on that now because I I'm I I like that. Uh yeah. You're on your way to the 200 oh, very much milestone, so. and uh, this is now a party. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I got a plan. And... You may not think so, but there's a plan. John, you did an amazing job. The the clips I'll give you. <laughs> And right back at you, Bon. You had no idea what you were up against tonight. I didn't either. Uh, it was a weird uh, curveball we got thrown, but uh, Clint Eastwood taught, taught us how to hit the curve, right, guys? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. That was. I mean, and, right. and plus, on, on such an absolutely crap show. I know. That's why Monique <laughs> Bell on it. If ever there was a good show to get sick to, it's this. I mean, when you do a victory lap for for uh, for medicated Pete. I mean, you know, things are bad. <laughs> yes, Monique does have the mummy's curse. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. I love you, chat. Hey, guys, thanks for hanging with us tonight. Please join us for any further discussion at RadioGunk.com in the forum section. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Radio Gunk. And don't forget to like this and subscribe to us and hit that little bell so you know when we're doing a new show. Thanks. 